Okay. Good evening, everyone. Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for March 14th, 2018. I'd like to call to order. Roll call. Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Loisel and Mr. Maroon. Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Approval of minutes from February 14th, 2018. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, next matter on the agenda is a six month extension request by Thomas and Terry Hergley. Hergley for appeal 2613, a practical difficulty variance for 39 Ocean Street, approved on September 13th, 2017. Good evening. Good evening. Please state your name. and uh, Walter you? Wilson, representing the applicant for the extension. I understand we don't need to do anything more just to reapprove it, reaffirm. That's all we need to do. If the board has any questions, they can ask Mr. Wilson. Okay. Does the board have any questions? I don't have any questions. All in favor to reapprove? Or we need a motion. Oh. Motion. Uh, move to approve the six month extension. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you very Thanks much. Up. Next matter is approval of draft written decision for appeal 2621, an administrative appeal by Joseph and Candace Sutlek to East Grand Avenue. Heard on February 14th, 2018. All members have had a copy of this in your packets and had a chance to review it. Does anybody have any questions or comments? No questions. Make a motion to uh, approve it. Do we need that approved? Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Any discussion? Any discussion on the matter? No. We do have two board members that were originally here at the original hearing that are not here. So we'll have everybody sign tonight, and then we'll bring that to the two members that are absent today for signatures. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. All in favor? Approved. Okay, into our appeals. Mr. Longstaff, would you like to introduce the first appeal and any staff comments you may have? Sure. The first appeal, number 2626, is a limited reduction of yard size request by David Stahelski uh, of 18 Houghton Street. That's Assessor's Map U2, Parcel 120. Um, it's basically uh, a limited reduction of yard size request to allow um, an existing, what, what is currently an existing um, open and actually screened porch to be converted into uh, a part of the kitchen extension of the house. It's not going to take up any additional footprint over what's there now. It's just a different use. So once it becomes part of the house, it's non-conforming because the house setback is supposed to be 12 feet. The porch is 10 feet from the line. So the limited reduction of yard size is to ask for the relief on the 12 foot setback on the secondary frontage to allow that screen porch to be used as part of the house instead of as a screen porch. It's currently conforming. It's going to be non-conforming because of the use, the change of the use of it. Any questions? Okay. Do you have any staff comments on that? Um, that, that was my staff comment. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know if that was just the appeal as well as staff yep. comments. Thank you. Do we have anybody representing for this appeal? Please take the podium. And can you please state your name and address, please? Yeah, sure. Good evening. My name is David Stahelski. I'm the owner. Great. Thank you. Would you like to go over the information on your appeal? As, uh, okay. The protocol is to review what the application was. That's correct. Uh, the, um, the existing structure is inclusive of a six by eight screened porch with roof, all of which was constructed uh, pre-ordinance. Uh, it is to be enclosed and made integral to the main kitchen. 
The current footprint is 10 foot from the town property line on the secondary frontage to Shell Street. The stated ordinance uh, requirement is 12 feet. A limited reduction of two feet is requested, which will maintain the existing building outline. No expansion or change to the existing building footprint is proposed or planned. Uh, a two by eight foot four inch limited reduction of yard size is requested to allow for enclosure of the porch area, which lies under an existing roof. There will be no change to the building line or footprint. The porch was constructed many years prior to July 3rd, 1991. The proposed two foot reduction, or pardon me, two foot limited reduction of yard size is reasonably necessary to allow me to use and enjoy an updated kitchen facility similar to other Higgins Beach properties. A 12 foot setback will create an unusual and unworkable shape to the kitchen. The two foot limited reduction variance will maintain the existing footprint in line with the main house. The request does not affect an enlargement or expansion to the porch area and is the result of a change of use of the porch to be part of the kitchen. Uh, we maintain the variance will have no impact as visually the construction will be in line with the main house and appear in the same location under the existing roof dimensions and floor dimensions of the screen porch. Uh, we do not request any enlargement or expansion. A limited variance request is the result of a change of use of the porch space to kitchen space. And I have not commenced any construction at this time. Okay, great. You kind of went into all the questions for me, so that's fine. Um, any other information that we can bring to us? You said something about the kitchen, make it unusable if, you couldn't, if you're trying to do it a different way. If I were to adhere to the 12-foot setback, uh, it would put a substantial jog in the kitchen and then not allow internally the walk-around area that uh, uh, is hopefully going to be uh, uh, constructed. Okay, great. Let's go over the questions in the board for any questions. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. <coughs> Uh, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record? Yes. Great. Any questions from the board? Pretty straightforward. The request of reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes. Any questions from the board on that? The plans are kind of big. Do you have the plans up there of what the kitchen is now? And yeah. Um, just to get a sense of how much big the expansion so is. So this is the existing kitchen. Right here, this horseshoe shape. This is the screen porch. Perfect. Thank you. And, and so then the new, the proposed rather, right. would be to, oops, wrong way, sorry would be to incorporate that screen porch as you see here and enlarge the kitchen here. Okay. Thank you. Due to the physical features of the lot or the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the pro proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Yes. Any questions in the board? No, I mean, the structure is already there. It's just changing the use of it. The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Yes. Any questions on that one? No questions. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. Yes. Any questions of the Board on that one? Okay. Public comment, yeah. I'd like to open it up to public comment. Anyone here to speak on this appeal? We did receive an email. Okay. Can you read that? Yeah, that'd be great. It says, to whom it may concern, my neighbor David Stahalski 
has applied for a variance to improve his property. I understand fully what he intends to do, and I think it's a wonderful idea. Can't wait to see the modifications next summer. Ted Tanglis at 5 Shell Street in Scarborough. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. Seeing no one here from the public, I'd like to close the public hearing, open it up for comments to the board or motions. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2626 as presented. Do we do any findings of fact on this? We should try to do uh, some, some cursory findings of fact. We can, we can do the same thing that we did the last time. We can make the decision tonight if you're ready to make that decision and we can bring back your draft findings and conclusions for you to sign at the next meeting. Also, um, there's a discussions portion to the motion, so we can and we can right. mention our findings of fact there as well. I'll second, just to get to the discussion. Okay, great. Open up for discussion to board members. Anybody have any findings of fact or discussion? Um, one note that I'd like to make that uh, based on the plans that are presented is physical you know, physical real estate that a building structure is already occupying on the property, so they're not looking to expand beyond that. Um, and uh, I, I really don't see an issue with this application. As is presented, I think the applicant's done a good job at uh, describing that the 12-foot setback will um, really make the, the additions they want to make to the home unworkable and unusable. And uh, I think this is based on the location uh, of the of the structure in the neighborhood with adjacent structures as well. There's the um, there's the impact on the neighborhood to consider, and we've heard from a neighbor that has supported the design and construction of this project. Ms. Sheep, do you have anything? No. Again, I mean, I don't really see any problems with this. Again, they're just changing the use of a structure that's already there, improving what they have. Any other additional? I don't, I don't have any problem. I don't know whether uh, many people are aware of it, but this house was used as a, uh, a place for the initial Higgins Beach character-based uh, meeting. The first weekend was in June a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful place. So you get into the kitchen. <laughs> and the kitchen is so, so tiny compared to the rest of the house. I mean, it's very, very obvious that uh, this is the correct thing to do. He's not doing anything other than putting up some walls. He is going to put a foundation underneath it. But it's by far the right thing to do, and it doesn't have any impact on anybody. I'm volunteering to be the original poster boy for uh, all your hard work at uh, creating the new regulations. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the comments that you made about it basically making the kitchen unusable if you try to do it a different way. I mean, I, it makes sense to do it this way. You're not really trying to expand it out further. You're not trying to do anything out of the ordinary. So, I think the fact that those things are there and you've got some pretty good draw diagrams drawn up that shows us what you're doing. So, I think it's pretty straightforward. I very much appreciate your comments. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. You got that? Mm -hmm. Let's go down the uh, list. All in favor of one being met? Existing building. All set? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we need to read them again? All in favor of two? All in favor of three being met. And all in favor of four being met. And five. Okay. And all in favor of five being met. Do <laughs> you in favor of five? All right. Showing that everybody has agreed on all five. Motion passes. Thank you very much.
so that's I need to make yeah. so mr. chair what we'll do is we'll 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 take your the tape of the meeting and the notes that we've got will draft the findings and conclusions and bring the written decision back for you to approve. The decision still stands tonight. The vote was uh, unanimous for the appeal. So that stands. That's Mr. Stahelski's um, uh, right then to proceed with the project. As far as the board business goes, you'll sign the actual written, or sign and approve the written findings next next meeting. Is okay. That, if well, that meets with so the we board. Don't sign the we don't sign the appeal tonight. No, we're going to yeah. start doing like this. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll sign it next week. Yeah. Five next month. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's new. <laughs> yeah. It's different. All right. Moving right along. Appeal number 2627, a limited reduction of yard size request by Holly White. <coughs> 13 Nunsuch Cove Road, Assessor's Map U2, parcel 30. So do we have presenting for this appeal? Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to kick in everybody that no one's coming up, so. I'm going to have you present if we have no one coming up. Huh? I, yeah, I, I was under the impression that there would be somebody here to present, but um, if the board wants to continue with it, there's no requirement that somebody be here. Um, the, the appeal can be heard, um, and I'm happy to explain what the uh, appellant is trying to request here, okay. if that meets with the board's approval. Yeah, as well as the staff comments as well that'd be great thank you sure so this is uh, appeal number 2627 limited reduction of yard size uh, by Holly Whitehead 13 <laughs> Nunsuch Cove Road uh, map u2 parcel 30 um, what you s I can try to show you on the screen behind us so right now this is the existing house it meets the setbacks this is the garage it meets the setbacks there is no actual passageway between the garage and the house, the way the house is laid out. There's a pass door here at the front. So when she uh, comes home with groceries or whatever, she has to come outside, walk to the front door, and go in. What she'd like to construct is a little uh, covered entry, not walled, but just roofed entry, uh, so that she can actually come in and get her keys out, put her groceries down, and not be rained upon. And access the front door uh, to the house. So what uh, the proposal is is for a, uh, excuse me, I don't have the dimensions um, on that drawing. It's a seven <coughs> foot deep by uh, I'm not seeing, oh, eight. Eight. seven by eight. Yeah. I knew it was there somewhere. So this is a seven by eight covered entry, as you see here, posted columns on, on the corners just to cover this, this door in the middle. Um, in order to do that, the house does meet the age requirement. It's older than uh, 1991, so um, it, it is eligible for a limited reduction, and they're asking for a uh, 5.6 foot reduction down to 34.6 to the front of the, uh, the entryway. This is going to be a granite step. We consider that landscaping, so it's not part of the structure that can encroach further into the, the setback. Thank you. I, I don't think I've ever had one where someone hasn't been here to answer questions to it and everything, so I don't know how we have how well, we address this. You, are you sure the applicant was not going to come tonight? I mean, it says you have a representative. Is that just the designer? Um, that was the, the gentleman that um, uh, um, submitted the application for her. Uh, her builder, okay. um, he was well aware of uh, when the meeting was going to be held, but um, I think just reading the responses into the record and then having your discussion, making the motion, having your discussion, and um, move forward. If you if you feel that you don't want to vote on it tonight, that's fine. But um, they certainly, I know that they were certainly counting on it being heard tonight. Okay. So, too so bad they weren't here. <laughs> um, She's out of, uh, the applicant, the owner rather, is out of town. She, she's not here right now, so. So basically there's really no structural or anything like that. It's just a covered entryway to go in to kind of get out of the rain when they're driving into the driveway with things that they need to bring into the house. Well, it's structural. It does have a roof on it, but. Okay. Yeah. Is there any foundation to the front yeah. step we know of? Yeah, they'd be putting it on. Um, Solitude slab. or. Not really sure what the con foundation construction is. I, I don't know that those details weren't provided. So I'm not 100% sure. 
Okay. It would have to be something that was, if it's going to be attached to the house, building code would require it to be frost protected anyways. It's either going to be pierced, post, slab, thickened edge slab, <laughs> or a full foundation frost wall and slab. I don't know which. Um, I don't mind going through the application, and we can answer the questions. To the have to qu read the questions in and hope that they answer all of our questions. But if we do have questions about this, um, I, mean, I hate to. I would hate to suggest tabling anything. But we, let's go through the application first, like Brian suggested, and, and see where we land at the end of it. <coughs> I think if this is anything different than this, I would probably. If no one was here, I'd probably just move on to the next appeal. Or not. Yeah. This looks pretty. It looks pretty basic. straightforward. Yeah. Okay. What we have is the existing building or structure on the lot, <clears throat> which the limited reduction of yard size is requested, was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, on the lot and is vacant, non-conforming lot. Uh, building was erected before th July 3rd, 1991. I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. It's pretty straightforward. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. <coughs> the response is, I would be able to put down packages, including my valuable cello. Cello. Is that supposed to be? Cello. Cello. All right. There we go. Jeez. Uh, while I unlock the front door, this is very important to me when I return to my home after evening rehearsals and performances and when it's raining or snowing. Any questions on that response from the applicant? Due to the physical features of the lot or the locations of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirement. Her response is, due to the placement of her home, there is not enough space to erect a small porch conforming to the currently applicable yard size because of the setbacks. So this is no other place. You pretty much went through this with them, Mr. Longstaff, and this is basically the only spot where they would be able to do this because there's no, did you say before, there's no spot coming through the garage? There's well, no the, the, There's a pass door out of the garage into the yard, but not into the into house. The house. So and there's no pass door between the garage and the house. Okay. So she can't, like most attached garages, and I don't know the reason why there was no attached door, she, there's no door for her to use inside. She has to come outside. And so she'd like to at least have a place that's covered out of the weather so she can gain entry into her house without being rained and snowed upon. Okay. If she had a fireproof door going from the garage into the structure. Apparently the floor plan doesn't accommodate that. Okay. Otherwise I'm sure she'd prefer to do that. But we don't have, or do we have? No, we really don't know. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? I have, I have a question on that because, I mean, we don't know what the floor plan is. And, I mean, it seems like it would be easy enough to put a door if we could see the floor plan, but we don't know what. Well, why put a door in if you've got a door already? There's no entrance from the garage. So she pulls, pulls a car in the yeah. garage, she has to get out and go. Yeah, so she goes to the front door, right? She's used to going to the front door. She just wants it covered to protect her, that's all. Well, my only question is, if she had a door in the garage, that would suffice, and she wouldn't have to be coming before us. Well, but then that's another door, right? Anybody else have any comments on that? Well, no, I mean, I can appreciate what you're saying. I mean, what costs more, putting the roof over the front door or putting a door in between the garage? I mean, I also kind of feel like, why wouldn't you put a door between your garage and your house unless the, it was not set up correctly for that purpose? And I think Brian's indicating when she, when she submitted this, that was your understanding was that's just not an option. In my discussions with the builder who, who I thought was going to be here tonight, right. that was the indication that I got. I didn't I find any plans for the house in the file, so I, didn't, I wasn't able to review that. His indication was there was nowhere to put a door from the garage mm -hmm. into the house. So I, I, all I can do is take that at face value. Okay. Any other comments on that one? And four, 
The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion and new building structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. <coughs> uh, in response to this, this is true. My small porch will not impact or affect the existing uses in the neighborhood, nor would it be different from nor greater than a structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Any questions on this from the board? No questions. And five, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the board or board of appeals is not considering an after the fact application. Um, project has not begun. I guess we'll open it up to public hearing, see if anybody here is to speak of that from the public. I have an email. Okay. Uh, this is from Caitlin Morgan at 12 Clays Pitts Road. It says, we received a letter regarding a limited reduction of yard size variance at 13 Nunsuch Cove Road. We are unable to attend the hearing on March 14th. We have no problems at all with the city allowing this variance. Anyone else from the public here to speak of this? Seeing none, close the public hearing. Open it up to the boards for questions or a vote. I'll yes. make a motion to approve appeal number 2627 as presented. I second the motion. Okay. Let's go down through the questions just for findings of fact and anything. All those in favor of one? Any questions or findings we have? Mr. Chairman, yes. it hard to read the, read the questions. Read it over again. <laughs> All right. A little bit too. The existing building of structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential re residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Any questions or comments on this for finding of fact? No. The warranty deed attached uh, to the application shows that the building was erected prior to 1991, July 3rd, 1991. Can you shoot? <laughs> Mr. Oh, sorry. I would agree. All in favor of one being met. Two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as the other similar properties that utilized in the zoning district. Go right down the same order. Um, as a musician, I can I can appreciate her uh, strife that she's in, setting things down, trying to get into the house while it's raining outside, especially coming home late at night. Um, there really isn't a, um, they've demonstrated that they can't push the building further forward, obviously, because it's at the edge of the uh, building setback, so I don't really see them, unless they, ha they can put in a door, um, from the garage to the building, but as Mr. Longstaff described, the builder did indicated that that was um, not impossible, but very, uh, very unlikely to happen due to the layout of the interior of the building, even though we don't have the interior plans of the building. Um, you know, there could be a bathroom or three bathrooms against that wall, we don't know, so. I think the applicant's done a good job at articulating kind of what they need this for. I think that's always good when they can say for this purpose, because that's their purpose. And, you know, I think any person wants to be able to do that at their house. Mr. Place? I don't have any problem with this. The only question I had, and I'm going to fall back on Mr. Longstaff on this, is basically you were told that there's no way to put a door in there, so we'll have to just go with what that is and <laughs> say that it's the best option at this point in time. So I wouldn't have a problem based upon your knowledge. and conversations that you had I can't say that there is a, an opportunity to put a door in there and I can't say that there isn't so barring that if you take the word of the appellants representative in, in my discussions but not here for the benefit of the board unfortunately um, the indication was that he had attempted to look for an opportunity to do that and there just wasn't one that made sense so um, whether it be bathrooms bedrooms or some other use that abutted up against the uh, garage. The garage may have been added at a later date. I'm not really sure. Um, but anyway, that's, <coughs> that's the indication that I got. Okay. All in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Three, due to the physical features <coughs> of the lot, bless you, and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical, practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Same. 
Yeah, um, looking at the site civil plan um, provided by NCS, it look, it demonstrates clearly, and I mentioned this uh, preemptively in my last description on uh, question number two, but the house is right up against the, the building setbacks um, dictated by the town, so they really don't. Um, it's not practical to really construct that anywhere else. She has one front door that she wants to use, and it's right there, right next to the setbacks. I think Mr. Hebert pretty much summed it up there. Mr. Place? No problem with it. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it is what it is. There's, <coughs> there's no space to do it, and it is just kind of, it does have a roof, but it's basically just something to get the rain to stop raining on somebody walking into the home. All in favor of three being met? Unanimous. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion on new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Um, the porch is very small. Um, it, it's not uh, the design and the, the planned construction of this porch wouldn't really put it aesthetically out of place or out of character with anything else in the neighborhood. Other buildings in that area have similar covers over there. Some do, some don't. Um, so it wouldn't put the building out of place, um, and it wouldn't be, subs it's not substantially large, so we don't have to worry about it being an eyesore anywhere. Issue? I mean, again, it's very small, and it's just improving the quality of the house there. Please. I agree. I mean, if, if, you, if you use the setback, if the house was <clears throat> set back far enough, they put the same thing on the front. It wouldn't be any different. It wouldn't be the same. I would agree. It wouldn't be any different than anything else in the neighborhood. It would look similar. All in favor of four being met? All right. And five. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering after the fact application. That's pretty straightforward. We can go down through, but I mean. I have. Well, I, I, Mr. Longstaff, you, you're, you're under the impression that they have not uh, constructed, begun construction on this yet? Uh, that's correct. The builder came in to get a permit, and we had the discussion and determined that it needed to come to the board first. So. Okay, and that's a good enough explanation for me. Good ship? Yes. It's nice. All right. Again, I wouldn't recommend not showing up to answer questions for things. That's not normally how we would do it, and where this one isn't as difficult and it's pretty straightforward. We can go with what Mr. Longstaff was told, but I mean, it's always great to have some question and answers or floor plans so we can see what we're looking at. All in favor of four, five being met. It's unanimous. Appeal passes. All in favor of the appeal. Final appeal. Sorry, jumped the gun. Appeal passes. Second okay. time, I'll tell you. I'll add, I'll add one quick comment just generally. Um, it would have been nice to see a floor, floor plan, but it would have been nicer to see a person here. Yeah. So in general, to all the millions of listeners out there um, that tune in, you know, it's, it's always very important to be here and just sort of explain the questions that you can't put down on paper. I would agree. Moving on. Appeal number 2628, a special exception request by Mary Gosich. 40 Beach, Gaucher. Gaucher. 40 Beach Ridge Road, Assessor's Map R42, Parcel 1G. Do we have any representation on this? <coughs> please take the podium. Your name and your address, please. So while she's walking to the podium, sure. um, special exception request for a home occupation to run a, a family daycare, uh, family daycare home. Um, so the board will uh, not only go through the special exception, um, criteria, but also the home occupation criteria, and um, and then there's also if that's not enough, there's family daycare criteria. So there'll be kind of three sets of questions for the applicant to answer. But will it be one motion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll all of those criteria just basically to make sure that the applicant understands the criteria under which she can have the home occupation, and that the home occupation is then a family daycare. And she's going to meet those, and those would go into your findings and conclusions. Great. Thanks. <clears throat> and that's all the staff comments. Yes. 
Please state your name and where you live. Um, my name is Mary Gaucher, and I live at 40 Beach Ridge. And what are you trying to do? Just put the daycare in the home? Yeah, home daycare. Okay. We'll go down through the questions with you. Do you have your copy or your yeah. answers? Mm -hmm. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions <coughs> to the air, water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Please read your answers to that. Um, I would not, um, it would not cause any unsanitary or, um, condition, or unhealthful conditions because I'm going to have um, infants and we're going to use diapers. Um, diapers, uh, I will put in a receptacle outside on a daily basis. Um, we won't be using any sewage or flushing toilets and things like that, anything extra than what we use at my home. Okay, thank you. Next question, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity? Well, um, there's only going to be four infants during the day. Um, it shouldn't be high traffic. Plus, um, my house is set back pretty far from Beach Ridge itself. And the driveway is 800 feet long. So um, if a car comes down, it takes a while to actually get to my house. And then another car. And there's plenty of parking in front of my house. Um, so I don't see that there would be um, any change in the neighborhood with that. I'm assuming you have a turnaround when the driveway is so long. It's so long, but two cars can fit by. We've tried. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next question. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I'm going to be taking care of babies, so um, I don't see that anything different will occur unless there's an accident, um, but I don't need security. I don't need anything extra that I wouldn't normally have at my home, with my family, my children. Okay, thank you. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. <clears throat> We're not planning on building anything new. We're not going to add an addition or, unless um, the board asks us to for coding or anything like that. Um, so there's, there shouldn't be any change. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity, proximity to other structures, and density of development. We're not going to change the building at all. So um, it will be compatible with the neighborhood just like it is now. Um, during hours of operation, many people are at work anyway, um, and I'm only going to be taking care of four infants, so it shouldn't impact the neighborhood too much. Do you have a time frame? When I can open the daycare? No, when you're, what, when the infants are going to be dropped off, like how long will they be there? Um, it depends on their parents and their work schedule, um, but it would, the hours of operation would be uh, 7.30 to 6 p.m., 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Next question, if located in a shoreland zone is depicted on the town of Scarborough's official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all of the requirements of the town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinances. And I'm pretty sure you've stated you're not in that. No. Next question, uh, applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Um, the, um, I'm a co-owner of the house with my husband, um, so we, we are in a um, RF zone, which allows us to be able to have a home daycare. Thank you. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of, the se of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. 
Um, um, we um, are both college educated, so I feel like we can take on this. My husband is a um, business manager, so with the business aspect, he's going to help me with that. Um, I have a master's degree in education, and um, what we just moved here. We came with savings with us to be able to do this, to invest in a home daycare. Um, if for some chance we don't have the, the means to do it, we can um, apply for our home equity loan in order to um, meet any requirements that are necessary. Okay, thank you. Next question, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, infants cry a little bit. <laughs> um, and they are on their, basically their own schedule. It's not going to, we're not going to be outside a lot um, making noise. Most of uh, the time they're with me, we'll, we'll be playing inside the house. Um, we will be outside when it's nice out, but I don't think that it will be noisy for the neighbors, especially there's so much space in between our homes. Um, <clears throat> And it will be compatible with what it's what it what it is in now. Okay, great. Mr. Longstaff, help me out here because you said we need to go over other questions as well. Yeah. So in in uh, section nine. standards for home occupations. Okay, now we'll have another set after this, correct? <coughs> yeah. We have some more questions for you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the occupation and profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building, your main structure, or within a building accessory thereto. Yeah, it would be in the main structure. Great, thank you. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. I'm aware of that, yeah. Okay. And there won't be anybody else? Not, not at this time. Okay. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provision <coughs> under section 12 sign regulation subsection E. Did you know you could have a sign if you want one? Yes. And you know I haven't started the that part yet. That. Yeah. It's 10 feet within the structure. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when, when and if she decides she wants a sign. Okay. I, I okay. don't remember the standards right off the top. All right. Yet. Don't quiz me too hard. I know it's going to be pretty close <laughs> to the structure, so. Yeah. But Mr. Hawkins <clears throat> can help you out with that. Thank you. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under Section 9, sign regulations, subsection E. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of home occupations or variation from the residential characters of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. I'm thinking you're not going to be storing those. Right? I don't even own any. That's a great way to keep babies in check, though, yeah. isn't it? Lobster <laughs> traps, yeah. Wouldn't want to be at your daycare. <laughs> no nuisance shall be generated, including, but not necessarily limited to the offen offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. And I think you've already addressed that. Mm -hmm. You have distance I between you and your neighbors. Yes. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. 
I really don't see this as a problem. The four You've got the long driveway and you said I have you a very long driveway. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of parking and um, there's only four. Okay. So it's not a huge traffic issue. Thank you. In addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak hour operations. There's plenty of parking. The home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. That's true. You've already. I've done the calculations, Mr. Chairman, and she's well under the, the uh, 20%. Thank you. Unfinished attic and basement spaces and space within the accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. Right. She's not doing an accessory building. Okay. And home occupations may include, we don't There's think no we need to go over these, right? <coughs> fishermen, lobster, motor vehicles. Right. So 10 through 12, we don't need to go over. And help me with the next section we need to okay. go to. back to four. Okay. And conditions required for child and adult daycare, family daycare. It's Great. just a few questions. There. Just a few more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Family daycare homes, group daycare homes, daycare centers, facilities, and nursery schools shall comply with the following conditions. Shall provide outdoor play area or recreation area as required by state regulations, which shall be in the rear and side yards only. Right. And um, I'm hoping to use, because I have infants, using our deck space. And that's what the picture is. And you'll probably have a gate, obviously. Yes. A, a gated deck. A gated deck for water tables, sand, um, things like that. Um, so it's, that's the size of it. And you can see the distance between the railings. Okay, great. All outdoor play or recreational areas shall be fenced. If the facility is approved during the winter, fencing shall be installed as soon as weather permits. Yes. We're still in winter over that yeah. one. Last two storms. Unless authorized by variance under Section VB3, such facilities may be located only on lots which comply fully with the minimum lot area and minimum street frontage requirements of this ordinance. This lot does comply. Does it does comply? Does comply. Do we need to do these as well? Uh, nope, because she is compliant in all of those. I think we've kind of answered those and some of the others, but we can um, go over if we need to. Yes, as far as number f number uh, five, we checked the neighboring properties and there are no other daycares within, uh, what was the distance? Five times the minimum street frontage of this um, house. So there's nobody else on the, on the whole road within a mile <laughs> of that property that we can find. So we determined that she met that. Okay, I don't know if we need to go over the sewers. Nope. She said just uh, diapers. In your packets, you'll see that the Gauchets have already applied for, uh, not applied for, but they've already had a site evaluator to the site and had an expanded system designed, recorded. Neighbors have been, have been noticed that uh, the system will be recorded and it's not going to be installed at this time because it wasn't 25% more of an increase in flow over what she's currently got. So the idea is in that case, you have a system design in case a system fails, you've got your space for that system reserved, it's recorded, it goes with the, with the property, no, the, the uh, abutting property owners won't be able to drill or anything that would, would then be non-compliant. So they've gone through all of those steps. Um, they're basically ready for inspections and, and that sort of good stuff from DHHS and, and all of the necessary steps there. But they've done all the, pre, the prerequisites Okay. Any questions from the board at this point? Or anything we've gone over so far? No. Um, Would it be good for comments? Yeah, we can go over those when we go over the questions. We can do that when we get the questions. Do you have any letters on this one? No. I'd like to open it to the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this appeal? Seeing there's none, we'll close the public hearing. Open it up for questions or motion. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 
26 28 I'll second great that being said let's go over everything now <laughs> do we go over all these to vote or do we go over the main criteria I think vote? I think for a special exception you can uh, ask the board members if they um, have any um, if they feel that any of those criteria have not been met, if they feel that anything hasn't been met in that list of criteria, I wouldn't go through, I wouldn't think that you need to go through every one. Okay, so just go through the main ones for special exception and then yeah, just the rest exception. which we don't yeah. need to go yeah. over. Those are more sta performing standards, <coughs> special exception criteria. Okay. Does anybody have any questions from the board on the performing standards at all? No. So we're going to go through the other ones after this is what you're saying? No, no we're just doing... Of special exceptions. The, the last two uh, sets of questions are right. performance standards. Um, They're not criteria that need to be met necessarily for the special exception. They are performance standards. Okay. That are one of the criteria is the number of employees. And I think one of my concerns surrounding this whole application is the, the infant thing. As someone who's embedded, who is battling for daycare in Scarborough currently, I mean, first, they don't stay infants forever. And so I'm kind of curious as to where this is going. And um, how many employees, I mean, hopefully, I think you're going to do pretty well considering what the demand is at this point. And I'm kind of curious what your plans are to bring on employees. Also, in regards to when the state gives you an application, are you allowed to be home alone by yourself with four infants? Yes. The, the state allows that. Yeah, it's so one So do you four. have a plan in place if you get applications for six, seven, eight? Um, is your plan to immediately hire someone or only have four the first year and see how it goes? Yeah, my plan is to, for one year, to keep four. And then if it goes well, I would like to see about having up to eight, but no more than that. Right. Um, that would allow me to hire an employee. One other person. Mm -hmm. And how many and what can does, they have? What's the state requirement for it's adult one, to child? One to four. One to four for babies. Are there any performance standards well, that would be addressed by one, that? One thing with this home occupation, um, family daycare, you're limited to six. Okay. Six, six clients, so then whether it's they're six. adults or children. <laughs> oh, because um, for the licensing, it's one Right. Three. The state and the town's ordinances are not synced up. Oh, okay. Perfectly. I didn't see that. Um, okay. So that's... I think that's an important point, though, because now your income has gone from four children to the possibility of eight to only six, which is just something to keep in mind, because now if you go from four, you're going to have two more. The state's going to require you to get an employee, but you're only playing an employee when you only are getting two more children. Uh, I'm just worried about expansion. I mean, I'm just watching this town explode with daycares and kids, and it's very unregulated at certain places. Mm -hmm. And I can testify that the state really is not in there. Maybe they are in the small ones, but I can say they're not paying attention very closely. And so, you know, I just want to make sure that the numbers kind of stay that way. Um, no, what is your plan when the kids aren't infants anymore? Well, um, it's just an infant daycare, so they would move on. I mean, when it's six weeks to two years old, that's what I'm applying for. Okay. So when they're two, uh, when they're three, they would move on to something bigger and better. Right. Now, are you in a private, it's private septic out there on Beach Ridge? Yes. I know when you're potty training, it's lots and lots of flushing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the design has to be done. Right. <laughs> now, with her employee, if she goes to six, that doesn't cut anything over that She's six, allowed right? to have one employee outside the house. Okay. Outside of residence of the house. So if you get one employee, you could have a maximum of six. Is that still what you're looking for? Oh, well, if, um, if six is too many or too little, I will stay with four. I think what Ms. Longstaff has said is you are able to do six if you get the proper documentation from the state, but Scarborough limits it to six. Right, but what you were saying, like if I hire somebody, right. that changes the like how much the business makes and things like that. So if, if I have six babies instead of eight, then I would think about maybe just keeping four and not hiring. I would just want to see how it goes for the first year and um, think about it again. Does that affect anything for her having to come back before us if she went and did get to six? And she said it, she she's wanted approved, to do it. She's approved for six under the family daycare standards. So she okay. can go to six without having to come back to the board. Okay. Um, because, because she can do that, she may need to employ another person, which she can do. 
Um, it's only if she switches and goes from a family daycare to a group daycare home or uh, some other some other use. Okay. okay. Does that sound? That sounds fair. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Let's go through the questions. <clears throat> The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emission in the air or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. Start at the same spot we started before, please. Yeah, um, she stated clearly that uh, waste, i.e. diapers, will be disposed of and tied in a plastic bag before they're put into the receptacle. I mean, that alleviates any concern I would have on this question. Because um, like, as, as the applicant had indicated, everything's all thrown out waste at this point with infants. Should... I think she's done a good job at showing that, you know, there's not going to be wearing and tearing on anything in the town. Mr. Place? I'm comfortable with her answer. <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of expanding upon that, telling us that you're only going to go to age two, I believe it was. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of potty trainers probably at two, so I don't think you're going to have unnecessarily. So that would be my assumption on that as well. All in favor of A, B, and MET? Janamis. Next question B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Sneeper. I think uh, due to the, uh, the fact that their home is 800 feet uh, from the road, which I'm sorry you had to plow that this week, but uh, <laughs> it... Uh, there's enough distance there that you know you're not going to have a, a really big traffic backup at the at the end of the driveway getting out on a Beach Ridge Road, um, even though it does get a lot of traffic during rush hour. Um, she said there's adequate parking in front of the home to suit uh, parents of each of the four infants that she wants to have at this time. Um, everything's going to be on their own uh, property in the side or rear of the house, so I don't see an issue with this. I think she's done a good job at showing that, especially the how the property is laid out, that it's really not going to be an issue at all. It's only for extra cars coming in and out. Mr. Place? Um, you know, she's only going to have four infants, and um, she's accepting them from uh, 7 o'clock in the morning until 6 or 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> how can there be any traffic? Even if they all showed up at the same time, it's still not going to be any traffic. No problems. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think the fact that you pointed out that you can do two cars in the driveway, one coming and one going, makes it great. And you've got a long ways, but that you're actually going into your property as well. So I'm assuming where you've got one coming and going, like I said, there's probably some turnaround in the driveway someplace oh, yeah. in front of your garage mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that would be my assumption on that as well. All in favor of B being that? Janinos. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems with, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Mr. Hubert? No, I don't, I don't see any issue with this, um, with this question at all. I mean, there's a fire station nearby in the event of an emergency that's already in close proximity to the home, so no issues there. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Suppose. No problem. Yeah, and you, you've got the children that you can do per the state guidelines, so I don't see even that as an emergency coming. Plus, you've got a huge driveway as well. They'll be able to get in there. All in favor of C being met. Unanimous. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or corrosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Mr. Yeah, um, getting back to my point uh, from, I guess, question A, um, all of the infant waste is going to be disposed off-site, so it's going to go into a bag, into a trash receptacle, and brought to the end and picked up. Um, she's a, the applicant has indicated that no new construction is going to take place, um, so there's not going to be any change to um, uh, uh, the current state of the ground or the soil surrounding the property. And they also have a, uh, and I'll probably repeat again, they have an updated septic system plan in place for when the current system fails. So they're covered. I think Mr. Hebert touched every point there. Mr. Place. I agree with her answer. 
I'd agree as well. You said <coughs> that there was a survey already done as well, correct? Survey? Some, I thought you it's said something. In the packet, there is a there's okay. a replacement system design. In the right. Packet. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. Showing that you have that, I think that's great because we've got that also as backup as well. All in favor of D being met. It's unanimous. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Mr. Hubert? Um, it's already an established home inside of the neighborhood already. And again, as I, as I mentioned in Part D, there is no, again, no new construction to the property, so there's not going to be a, any significant visual impact. No one's going to be able to see the, the fence or the gate that she puts in around her porch um, for, the, for the infants to play in outside. So again, I don't see an issue with this part of the application. I don't see any issue at all. I mean, it's just it's like a house with four children. Dead, you know, really no different than a neighborhood. This place. I, I don't see any problem at all. It's no different than a neighbor having four kids. She's going to have four kids. Your neighbor's going to have four kids. Same thing. Yeah, and the applicant's gone over precisely what she was going to do um, with the <coughs> deck having the gate on it and everything. So, I mean, it, it is. It's very similar to a larger family. So, and you've only got babies to two-year-olds, they're not going to go very far. So all in favor of E being met. It's unanimous. F, if located in a shoreland zone, is depicted in the town of Scarborough's official zone. Land. It's not in the shoreland zoning, so we don't have to worry about that. So all in favor of F being met. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I think that's pretty straightforward. She's already answered a lot of our questions on that. On G, yep, um, yep. There's a warranty deed here that shows that uh, that both that the applicants are uh, owners of the property. Yep. Place. I don't have any problem with this. Yeah, you've shown us the, that you're <coughs> capable and willing to do even if something we were to put in there, which I don't see that happening. But you've shown the. Mr. The ability Chair. to be able to do that. In the second part of that is if there's conditions imposed by the board, I think the question is, does the board see any condition, is the board considering any conditions to add to any approval of this application? That's, that's why that question is there. We did have one other one, I think, a couple of years ago that was right behind Amato's, and I think we put conditions of offense there, and we also had asked the operator of the daycare to have people, to, I think that was more of a Montessori school. Montessori school. Yeah, yeah and we had him, asked him if we could have him go out right in the left-hand turns, mm -hmm. but I don't see any conditions being imposed like that on this. That had a unique <clears throat> circumstance with a lot of traffic driving behind it, and it was right in a high traffic zone, so I don't think, unless any other board members have any other conditions that you think that we need to impose, I don't see any. Yeah. So I think we're good. All in favor of F B uh, G B <coughs> it's unanimous. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant <coughs> to the subsection five of this section. I think we kind of went over that in the first one a little bit. So Yeah, they said they have the me they stated they have the means to take this on and if they need to have any additions put on the home or anything like that, they have the financial and capable means to do that as well. So I have no issues with this. Is she anything no, I agree. I think they've demonstrated they have more than enough capability to do this. They wouldn't be here unless I had to. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm surprised that no one's asked what um, Ms. Gaucher Ms. Ms. Gauche does for a living right now. Do you want me to ask that? Is that um, what you're... I'm, I'm offering that up. Okay. Right. I work at a daycare. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had kind of figured that, or at least I had. But and I realized I love it, and so and I wondered why I have why to drive away from my house to do this. <laughs> so. Okay, great. We put that on the record. <laughs> all that, in, all in favor of H being met. It's all unanimous. I, the proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Pretty straightforward. I mean, you've got your hours. I don't think there's going to be any other generation of noise like Mr. Blaze said, other than someone that had four kids and the four kids were crying at the same time. So, go down the row here. But 
I don't think there's much we need to add to that. No. No, I mean, no neighbors are here speaking, so. No problem. That's all what the lobster traps are for. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I wouldn't go to your daycare. Um, all in favor of I being met? It's unanimous. Final vote on the appeal of appeal 2628. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. I did forget to mention at the beginning of the meeting, Ms. Shoup is a voting member today, so I apologize for that. Hopefully. Yes, you are. So we're doing all of these at the next meeting. We're doing all the signatures at the next meeting now, right? Correct. Okay. Just making sure. <coughs> Sounds good. Appeal number 2629, a miscellaneous appeal request by William Weeks, 565 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U35, Parcel 15. Mr. Longstaff, would you like to introduce the appeal while he's getting set up in any staff comments? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Uh, appeal 2629 uh, is a miscellaneous appeal for the resumption of a non-conforming use in the uh, TBC 3 district. Um, in the TBC 3 district, single family dwellings are not permitted if they front on US Route 1. Um, this property does front on US Route 1. It was a single family dwelling. However, it's not been occupied, we believe, for over a year. And no evidence has been brought forward to refute that. So it actually becomes a resumption of a non conforming use, um, which is permitted only by miscellaneous approval of miscellaneous appeal uh, to the Board of Appeals to resume a non-conforming use or to expand or to um, enlarge uh, any anything doing having to do with a non-conforming use um, being uh, expanded, enlarged, or, or resumed comes to the Board of Appeals through this, this vehicle, this miscellaneous appeal. Um, the appellant is, is going to explain why uh, he believes the single family dwelling is his best uh, uh, use of this property. Um, it's a very non conforming property in that it only has a, a 50 foot wide uh, street frontage and therefore, with 15 foot setbacks, only has a 20 foot wide building window. And you can see demonstrated on the, on the uh, applicants. This yellow is the existing footprint of the existing structure. The pink is what he's proposing uh, by raising, tearing down, demol demolishing the existing building and putting this pink footprint back as a single family dwelling. And where is Route 1 in the really Route list? 1 is out here. Okay, thank you. Just state your name and your address and what you're looking to do, and then we can go into the appeal. Sure. My name is Bill Weeks, and uh, I am the owner of 565 U.S. Route 1, and I presently reside at uh, 10 Clearwater Drive in Scarborough. Um, what I'm going to hand you is something so that you don't have to strain to look at those so much. This is not new information. This is just closer information than what's up on the board. Thank you. So I am proposing a miscellaneous appeal to expand, convert, resume, or extend a non-conforming use, land building or structures. Um, in keeping with the, the you're looking at, uh, there's two appeals going to be before you this evening. You're looking at the green copy at this point. Uh, the cover sheet is the green cover sheet. That's M1, M2. Page M2, lower right hand, is the application for the miscellaneous appeal. And uh, the following pages, I will outline the uh, criteria for the miscellaneous appeal. Question and answer. The M4 is my right title and interest to the property, the warranty deed. <coughs> M5 is the second of the two pages for the warranty deed. M6, the justification for the appeal. 
So I'll make a brief presentation and uh, then I'll go over the uh, standards. The Town of Scarborough adopted its first zoning ordinance in 1959 and this property was improved in 1950. So this was originally built prior to zoning. Uh, regardless of its present zoning, it was even improved before there was any zoning at all. The additional improvements and additions in, and uh, have occurred throughout the years as well as some demolition of uh, accessory structures. The property has been occupied and improved and used as a single family dwelling unit with accessories uh, since its inception uh, to its current time. As uh, uh, Brian had stated, um, I, I did not present any um, evidence to show that the property has or has not been occupied within the past year. It's really a mute point because the same appeal is used to resume this non-conforming use as it is to expand, extend, or enlarge. So we just didn't pollute the, the, the question. It's still the same standards whether I am asking to resume or asking to enlarge or extend or expand. So the uh, present Town of Scarborough zoning ordinance that uh, we're working on here is uh, November 1st of 17, which uh, interprets this structure to be a non-conforming use of land because it's a single family dwelling in the TVC3 zo uh, zoning district. And um, so that is the use and the other, the next appeal we'll go into uh, is actually the uh, structure is a non-conforming structure as well. Um, so under the a conservative approach of the land, as I, as an applicant, I'm seeking this miscellaneous appeal to permit the non-conforming use of land building and structures to be enlarged, extended, expanded, resumed, or converted, uh, as provided in the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance Section C and D, Step One and then proceed to the, the Monday night, we went to the planning board for the advisory opinion. And uh, I believe you'll have record uh, in front of you that we have a positive opinion from the planning board for that. So next is to be in front of this board for the mis mis miscellaneous appeal. And then we'll, if, if granted, I will be asking for a variance appeal to uh, erase the existing structure and then replace it back in its similar footprint with a little more square foot uh, footprint to the pr uh, proposal. So now I'll go to section three, the nonconformance. The appeals from restrictions of the nonconforming uses uh, cause us to go to subsection D and E of the nonconforming um, use of land building and structures. We go to M7, the next page. I need to prove the impacts and effects of the enlargement, extension, expansion, or resumption, or conversion. Uh, to another non-conforming use of, of the uh, existing uses will be compatible or not substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the non-conforming use before this enlargement, extension, expansion, or resumption. So again, our key words here are resumption and uh, enlargement or extension. Well, let me just stop you there so I can read the questions and you can read your answers to it. That'll be fine. Okay. So you've already went over the actual question, the impact and effects of the large <coughs> expansion, expansion, res resumption, conversion to other non-conforming uses in the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects of the non-conforming use before the proposed enlargement, extension, expansion, resumption, or conversion to another non-conforming use. And just read your answers to that. In fact, so we're looking at paragraph A. In fact, the past use of the of the property was residential. The proposed use is to be resumed uh, a uh, single family residential uh, use. So prior use was residential, proposed use is residential. The prior use, original use was there was no zoning. That they didn't wasn't wasn't allowed or disallowed. Uh, before the TVC 3 district, it was a permitted use. When the TVC 3 district was invented, because my property fronts on US Route 1, it presently falls into a category of non conforming use. Um, so, uh, this existing gross footprint of property, uh, the, the improvements on the property, are approximately 2,800 square feet. Um, this includes 
the first floor, the basement, the loft, the front porches, the rear porches and decks, and Bilco Bulkhead. You're about, you're about 2,800 square feet. Um, the old tax assessor's records showed at one point in time that there was actually some uh, detached garages, repair facilities, pools, and other decks, which uh, I have, uh, you'll be able to see in some of these photos, evidence of some of the leftovers that were in the woods and in the fields and out back uh, before I cleaned it up. A mild adjustment to this A impact, the presentation shows a, uh, in writing, the proposed gross maximum square footage of the structures in this presentation, 2,576 square feet. That, since my uh, submittal uh, occurred, I have actually backed that proposal down some because I'm not now proposing a basement. It's going to be a slab on grade only. And I'll, I'll explain why that change had occurred. I was originally in uh, contact with the fire department in regards to possibly um, putting my name in the hat for the opportunity for potential reuse of the, a couple of the structures here beside Town Hall uh, when they put in the new public safety building. One was a cape and another is a ranch. Uh, when I broached the fire chief on that, uh, I'm in, I'm in for consideration, but I think the timing may not work out well. And then the other part that uh, doesn't work out perfectly is when I reintroduce this use and reintroduce this structure, I need to bring it up to, to building code compliance. And in order to do that, um, it would be substantially greater to do it with an, an old structure than it would be to take a brand new structure and make it 100% code compliant. So uh, I've, backed, I've unthreaded my big proposal and minimized it to it's going to be now about 1,488 square feet. That is the pink on, on your uh, la uh, very last page, M11. You'll see the pink outline also on board. Uh, that is basically the total outside dimension of the proposal, a 24 by 62 footprint. Next, the uh, B, paragraph B, the enlarged extend, uh, extended, expanded, uh, resumed, or converted uh, use will comply with the special exception standards uh, 4I of this ordinance. Did you want to read that, uh, Mr. No, Crockett? And then I'll respond. <laughs> So we're on M7, yep. par lower paragraph A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, un unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, mission to the air or water, other aspects of its de design of operation. So my response to that is uh, the, the existing property uh, has or had a two-bedroom uh, single-family house on it two bedrooms with an existing subsurface wastewater disposal system in the rear. Uh, the property uh, does not have the opportunity to enjoy uh, public sewer. That is a little too far away for me to uh, obtain. So the proposal is to resume this two bedroom, uh, 90 gallon per minute uh, design uh, back when I reconstruct the house. Uh, in order to satisfy the, uh, the building inspector, I will need to uh, have the existing system examined to determine that it is failing or not failing. Uh, it would appear that it is not failing, but we'll get the appropriate uh, uh, expert to uh, put his opinion on that. In the event that everything looks fine as I expect it to be, uh, the plumbing inspector, building inspector will probably require me to um, design and permit a replacement <coughs> system without a replacement system variance i.e. I can't get it any bigger, two for two, two bedroom for two bedroom. And uh, so that's anticipated that I'll probably have to have a new HHE 200 uh, design on board, on standby. They may even make me uh, record it. As you had heard earlier this evening, one was going to be recorded so that it uh, secures the land and nobody can drill a well so close that would cause me to be denied in the future the installation of that. 
So that is the answer to A. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing unforeseeable traffic in its vicinity. So the answer to that is the property has already been actually improved to some extent by clearing the line of sight distances uh, out of the driveway onto the Route 1 right of way. And uh, this was done in order to also invite the Scarborough Public Works to re-ditch the, the Route 1 uh, drainage out front, which ties into uh, D. So I'll pause on that and we'll go to the next one. C, the proposed use would not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. So this is uh, actually uh, going to, imp my proposal will improve the public safety aspects of this property in that we'll be bringing it up entirely to code. Uh, it'll have fire, uh, fire and uh, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. So it'll be bringing up to 100% today's standards. If I was just to improve the existing property that's on it, just a miscellaneous appeal only to resume, then um, I could put the adequate devices in there, but some of the room sizes and door sizes and window sizes, it did be quite a bit of work to make that 100% uh, compliant. When I put a brand new structure in uh, on the next appeal, you'll, you'll see that uh, we'll be 100% compliant. D, the proposed use would not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. So this is the second half of the earlier question. Uh, we have already have begun some improvements by having the public works come up and re-ditch the, the Route 1 frontage. Uh, this uh, uh, significantly improved two upper properties above mine uh, in that the water was actually cascading over the ditch and behind the properties and was actually flooding my subsurface uh, wastewater disposal system as well as my neighbors when the public works uh, came up and re-ditched. Now the water goes in the front ditch and down alongside of Route 1 and not flooding out our septic systems. So this, uh, this already has been improved. Okay. E, the proposed use be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, this is a compatible, seamless proposal where we have a, had a single, have or had a single family dwelling. Uh, the intentions are to have or continue a single family dwelling. Um, visually, the proposed structure will be more visually pleasing in that the structure, uh, as you can see some of the existing uh, photos, it's, it's a little bit distressed right now. It has been um, It has enjoyed a lot of lack of maintenance over the years, to, to put it uh, mildly. Uh, some uh, um, renovations have occurred and it's uh, in the past before I bought it and I um, am continuing the theme of making this a better uh, property. Shoreland zone. I know there's water behind you. It's not. It is in the shoreland zone. It is. Okay. F shoreland zoning. Yes. So F, if located in a shoreland zone, is depicted on the Town of Scarborough official shoreland zoning map. The proposed use will comply with all of the requirements of the Town of Scarborough Shore shoreland zoning ordinance 8592. <clears throat> so if you look at the your last page, uh, 10 or 11, we'll go over 10 because it's an existing condition. Right up back here, you'll see this point and a 75 was set back. So this is the upland edge and uh, was de depicted. So all my improvements are way outside the 75 foot. So that's the upland edge, but still not the, the entire property fits into the big overlay district. So TBC is the underlying use district. Zoning overlays that. So my entire property is in shoreland zoning. Therefore, I'll have to, uh, uh, as I believe the staff already has notified DPP of my proposal, and uh, it's highly likely that uh, the erase, the erasing of this existing structure and the rebuilding of a new uh, will require probably a permit by rule or some uh, notification and permitting through DEP. Even though we're high and dry, way out of, way out of the flood zone, but we're still in shoreline zone and on top of <coughs> Can you confirm that's been sent? Uh, yes. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I did send, I forwarded the proposal, uh, the appeal application to the Department of Environmental Protection. I did not receive any comment. Thank you. The G, this, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. And that is evidence as your page M4 <laughs> and 5, my warranty deed. Yes, I am. Presently the owner. Thank you. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Uh, I believe I do have the technical financial ability to meet uh, all of the standards that the Board could uh, deem necessary as uh, I've been a contractor in this town for about 43 years and the improvements will all be self-financed. I don't have a partner other than my wife and um, so whatever the board deems necessary for conditions of approval, I will be able to satisfy. Thank you. F, the pro proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. So, in fact, this will be a seamless proposal. Um, if, my, if this property didn't front on US Route 1 and it had uh, enough area, I mean, I could have a multifamily on here. <laughs> it's so, it's just, this is why the Zoning Board of Appeals event is invented because it doesn't quite fit this proposal to resume, this proposal to exchange. We need some safety valve to take these minor, narrow properties and allow them to continue in some effect. So that causes me to um, make this proposal for miscellaneous appeal to get rid of something like this and convert it to something a little more attractive, something a little more useful, more code compliant uh, in a very narrow lot. The lot is 50 foot wide by about 276 feet deep. So it's, it's, it, it's very, very narrow. So on stuff, does it make any difference where it has been kind of abandoned and it's now the, the non-conforming? Well, again, the, the purpose of zoning is generally to try to um, um, eliminate non-conformances over time, um, not to perpetuate them. Um, and under the right circumstances, as Mr. Um, um, Weeks has told you, the um, you know permitted uses might be multifamily uh, offices, those kinds of things. Um, but certainly any, any change of use is going to be challenging on this lot. Even the continuation of the same use is going to be challenging on this lot. Um, but I think a couple of things that the board might want to be aware of, and I can't remember if Mr. Weeks hit on it or not, I think that the properties on both sides of him are residential currently. Yes, they are. Um, whereas if they were commercial, you might if they were already conforming commercial uses or multifamily uses, you might look at this a little bit differently um, with that regard. On the other hand, if the house was being proposed to be saved and renovated and used, it might be a lot easier to, to look at it as, yeah, it makes sense to continue the use. The, the, the problematic thing, it's both the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do, is to remove the structure. <laughs> because by removing the structure, you've now cleaned the, the pallet off and you have the ability to put a conforming use, maybe put a conforming use on there. Um, part of your, part of this process is that the, as Mr. Weeks said, the planning board heard this appeal in order to provide an advisory opinion. I actually don't have a copy of the advisory opinion. I think Karen has uh, given you each of those. Uh, if she hasn't, she'll distribute them. Mm -hmm. um, but, as I understand it, in talking with the planning staff, their advisory opinion was positive, uh, not negative. The ordinance says that if, unless you have good reason for, um, or you can state good reason for going against that advisory opinion, you should normally hold with their opinion um, or find in the affirmative. On a, on a resumption or enlargement of, of a non-conforming use. So I've thrown all that at you. What does it all mean? It means it's back in your hands to decide whether or not you feel 
that this has both met the special <coughs> exception uh, criteria that Mr. Weeks has provided your responses to uh, moments ago. And do you feel that um, perpetuating the ex sort of the last use, the existing non-conforming use, is maybe the best and safest use of this property? And I believe one of the planning board comments was because of the narrowness of the lot and this, the curb cut there, anything that would generate more traffic than a single family dwelling might be not a good idea um, in this location. So I think that was one of the reasons why they <coughs> they provided the opinion. You, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Bill, but I think that was one of the things that they, they mentioned is that uh, they felt that this use was the lowest impact use yep. for this particular yep. location. And Indeed, that was one of the one of the uh, findings, and uh, then there was other some other staff uh, comments back from the planning board and or uh, your staff in regards to a, a hammerhead driveway, so that uh, the traffic would not have to back onto Route One. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so in, in that review, to to make my special exception criteria work, and after. Uh, a couple of uh, meetings with the planning staff and code staff. I did review other conforming uses, but by the time you put the radiuses in there to get vehicles in and out of the property, by the time you put the parking in, the buffers, the required buffers in, because this would be a commercial use against non-conforming residential properties on each side, it, I, I end up with uh, maybe a kiosk a bank kiosk, <laughs> which the trips would, 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 would not work there. Getting in and out, I, I couldn't bring a car in and turn them around without backing out. So it, it just keeps coming back to the continuation of an existing single family dwelling is the most practical and the highest and best use of the property right now. Part of, part of my adjustment to the proposal, n not looking favorably at reuse of one of the existing buildings here on, on municipal property, or building myself a basement and, an, and a new single floor building or a two floor building is. Uh, my intentions are to build this a slab on grade, this structure to be put on a slab on grade, at which time I'll be putting beam pockets in the, the new construction of the new building such that I could slide a piece of steel in there or the or the the, the fu a future owner could slide a piece of steel or two in there lift it up and roll it right away in the event that some of these properties are joined together in the future for a non-conforming use uh, check for a conforming use if the uh, avista uh, concept grows up there then there's a property or two on the south of me, and there's a property or two on the north of me, all little tiny pieces that could all be joined together if mine was very portable. So I, I'm intending to make it very portable, make my little piece of pie available in the future for conforming use. But until then, will it, will, will the presentation is to resume or continue the nonconformity. So you're saying you explored like a two-story office building where you could have like one office downstairs for someone like a, a realtor or something like that and then have an office upstairs? I couldn't even get beyond a single, single floor uh, commercial uh, proposal due to the, um, see, you have to back into this in three or four different ways. Uh, because of the not being on sewer, you're limited to a very, very, very low to no flow um, water usage <coughs> use. And, and that immediately uh, takes several of the light commercial uh, options off the table. Uh, so it goes, it goes quickly right back to you know, a, 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 a single bedroom, 90 gallons per day, couple of bedrooms, 180 gallons per day, is, has an existing septic system in there. With the home being proposed to go back in its original footprint and ahead just a little bit, I don't disturb the old septic system. See, as soon as you disturb that old septic system, then you're going to have to be fully compliant. You may have to raise the bed, and that could, being in the shoreland zoning, that complicates things. So every time you try to fit a different proposal in there, a 
conforming proposal, a couple other elements fall out of the, the realm of possibilities. So it keeps coming back to single family, single family, single family, which is non-conforming. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any questions or problems with it being as portable as the applicant saying? Town would have any problem with that or anything? Okay. All right. Do we have any? I'd like to open it up to the public and anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Open it up to questions from the board or a motion. Do we need to read in the planning boards or is that just automatically part of record? Would that help? Uh, I think it probably makes sense to. Yeah, why not? Okay. All right, well, I'll read that in. Excerpt of draft minutes, planning board, March 12, 2018. William Weeks request an advisory opinion for the miscellaneous appeal for an expansion of 565 U.S. Route 1, assessor's map U35, lot 15. Mr. Chance explained that the applicant is seeking an advisory opinion for the board for 565 U.S. Route 1, which is a TBC district. Mr. Chance explained. Chase. Chase, I'm sorry. Jeez. I need glasses, I swear. Mr. Chase explained that this is a grandfathered non-conforming use when the district is single family dwelling fr fronting <coughs> Route 1 are not permitted within the TBC 3 district. Mr. Chase stated that any legal non-conforming use may be enlarged, extended, expanded, resumed, or converted to another non-conforming use after approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Chase stated that the ap applicant has applied to the ZBA for the miscellaneous appeal but must first receive an advisory opinion from the Planning Board. Bill Weeks, owner of the property, stated that he purchased the property in July of 2017. Mr. Weeks explained that the property existed before zoning was enacted and was in a residential area when constructed. Mr. Weeks explained that he would like to remove the existing structure and replace it with a new single-family residence. Mr. Weeks explained that he has been currently cleaning up the property of debris and has begun landscaping. Mr. Weeks reviewed the standards for special exception and read into record his responses. Mr. Weeks presented proposed 24 by 62 new structure, a single family residence slab on grade with a garage and a hammerhead turnaround. Mr. Weeks stated that the structure will be, a hand, will be handicap accessible with all components at grade and 36 inch doorways. Mr. Fellows opened the public comment. There was no public comment. Mr. Anglis. Ms. Anglis. Anglis. Ms. Anglis, jeez. Uh, noted that it abuts the shoreland zone and that the applicant has done a lot of work already for such a tiny space. Ms. Saunders asked who the contract will be. Mr. Weeks stated that he would be. Ms. Saunders stated that due to the close proximity to the shoreland zone, certain certifications by the contract will be necessary. Ms. Saunders questioned why there were <coughs> bless you, not hooking into the public sewer. Mr. Weeks stated it is over 600 feet away. Ms. Saunders asked if Mr. Weeks had tested the septic system. Mr. Weeks stated that he has and will need to provide the town with documentation that if it fails, it can be replaced. Ms. Hendrickson stated she appreciated the applicant's building, the structure to be handicapped accessible. Dupere. Mr. Dupere. Dupere. Uh, Dupere also stated he appreciated the handicap accessibility and was in favor of the proposed change. Mr. Fellows was supportive of the idea as well and stated the applicant had demonstrated his re request very well. Mr. Fellows stated the board will make a unanimous positive advisory opinion to the Board of Appeals. Any questions from the board? Any questions or comments on the advisory from the planning board? I mean, Stop. they are the planning board. I mean, a little confused as to why they want to go against what the purpose of the zoning is for. I've been watching the clearing of this, kind of been wondering what business is going in there. I mean, yes, he is surrounded by residents, but I think when you just go south of him, it's maybe one residence, and then you get into more um, to more businesses and things like that. And then when you get down further down Dunstan, you know, you've got, you've got all the little homes who have parking behind it, and that was one of the questions I had for you. I mean, what, what's behind it? Would it be possible for people to pull in and park behind the building? Behind the building is the septic system. Yep, okay, that's what yep. I was asking. Of course. Yep. So, oh. one other alignment, based on the planning staff's uh, recommendation, that's the existing uh, structure, the yellow. The pink is the proposed uh, total, outside, total outside dimension. 
and then they had suggested a turnaround, ham head turnaround. So you'd be, this is Route 1, your vehicle would drive in on the new pavement and into the garage in the front, and then they could back into the turnaround and drive out. So it, and that's your vision from what they... This, is what, this was proposed and shown to them on Monday night as well, okay. to, in response to their, their staff comments. That makes sense. I know a couple of properties up there have that same type of design because it's almost yeah. impossible to back out there. Right. I guess the, the issue I have with this initially was, you know, why not just go with a commercial property here right. instead of trying Absolutely. to go through two significant hoops here to bring it back uh, to a non-conforming use. So um, I, appreciate, I appreciate the detail in this application. And, um, and also the explanations that have come from this as far as um, you're limited by your sewer and eliminates most of the commercial, and the sewer alone eliminates most of the commercial uses. Okay. Is it just the sewer that eliminates most of the commercial use or are there other, you mentioned the narrowness of the lot as well. Because of the narrowness of the <coughs> lot, you, you can't uh, install radiuses for traffic. Mm -hmm. on there. B even the, a small car is just going to make it into that ham hammerhead turnaround. Anything larger than that, you'll have to jig a couple times to, to get turned around. So <coughs> the subsurface wastewater existing versus non-sewer uh, availability, the width of the lot narrows your, your building down, the buffering that would be required in planting. Uh, not that I'm go not going to do a lot of planting, that will uh, occur even with this residential, but uh, if this was being proposed for a commercial use or to go to the planning board with some uh, good buffering requirements, uh, that would be tight w uh, within the setbacks. Mm -hmm. So it, it was several, several items that caused me to go back to the existing non-conforming. Okay. Speak speaking to that is any of the shoreland zone figured into that for a commercial building as opposed to residential building down there? Well, you'd, you'd probably, you, you, with the shoreland zoning aspect, you may have to go to a bigger permit with DEP uh, to disturb, when, when you're disturbing the property. I, on this uh, 24 by 62 footprint adjustment, will probably be able to, to put some sill fence and some uh, erosion control mix around it get, and uh, do a permit by rule without having to go over the septic system. So my exposure will be very limited compared to a commercial which would turn up a quite a bit more uh, area on that little property. Do you mind showing kind of here, I mean, where the septic is laid out? You said there used to be a pool and other buildings. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious as to what's going on behind you. Uh, there was an automotive garage here. There was a pool in here, and there were several uh, uh, crushed buildings out back okay. that were all cleaned up. Um, this, is an this is an example of some of the parts and fe features of the buildings that were out back. And where's the septic on that, on that the one The septic there? is right here where it says, uh, you know, 3.6 feet from roof. The, sept the existing septic system is right in here. And you haven't had that tested yet, right? I have not had it tested yet, but it presently does not appear to be a malfunctioning in any way. <clears throat> and it's obviously set up for two, for two bedrooms. Two bedroom uh, is what was in the past, and that's what I will continue my uh, proposal with a, a two bedroom. Where is your hookup for if you were to go with public sewer? Where is that hookup on this diagram? Is it off? Well. Uh, I think Brian has his assessment map coming up right now. <laughs> we'll be able to show you. It's it's up by Dunson Schoolhouse, so they're on the line. Let's put it that way. Okay. And, uh, and this is on the fire station side. Correct. It's on the correct. Yep. So you have to bring it down quite a ways. Yes. Yeah. Which would mean, which is under that uh, large uh, ditch that has ju has just been maintained. So right up there with the in the intersection of the pain, the pain road bypass there, I think you'll find the sewer somewhere in the, in the area of the old Dunson Schoolhouse. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Place, do you have any questions? No. Probably in excess of six to 800 feet away. Any other questions from the board? I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, one of the criteria is not the, that there's no other purpose, right? That's not one of these, right? 
There's no other purpose for this. I mean, I'm just finding a hard time that there, it couldn't be commercial, but I don't think that's falling under the special exemption per se. There's no other criteria, correct? You want to say? The criteria that, that you, you need to use is the special exception criteria found under section four, uh, I-4. I think when we go get into the appeal that follows this, that right. would be what you'd be looking at possibly. All right, let's go down through the questions. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. I think we've had a lot of information on that already. Mr. Huber, we'll start with you again. Sorry, Mr. Chair. I'm going to bring this, close this, and then we're opening it back up again. We're on point A. Yes. Um, yes, the applicant has stated that this is past has been residential even though it's in the tbc3 zone um they're unable they're stating that they're unable to put a conforming structure in here um so i'm going to go with uh, the word of the applicant and the information provided here no i agree i mean they're only replacing what was already there and in, in use before prior just a place i don't i don't have any uh any problems with this I think we've already discussed that if the sewage does fail, you would replace it with something that would be the same. And it seems like you're making concessions to try to alleviate any harmful conditions by some of the things you're doing with plantings and other things like that. Yes. You've got to go through the shoreline zoning anyway. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of A, B, and Met? Unanimous. B, the proposed juice would not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Mr. Hubert. The property was residential. Uh, granted, it probably hasn't been used as a residential property for a few years, um, and things have changed in that, in that area recently with new development, and it's always been a traffic issue going through there, so um, the proposed use, new use, uh, revitalization of this old use um, shouldn't really contribute a lot to that. I don't think it's going to have any change. And as someone who drives by it multiple days, you've done a really good job clearing it out. So whoever's going to be pulling out of there is not going to have a hard time seeing. I think what he's proposing to do with the uh, hammerhead turnaround is excellent. Just helps the uh, access to the property. Much better. Now, is that the zoning board that asked for that, or did you design that? The planning staff asked for that. Yeah, I think it's a great idea because, like I said, I know a couple other properties down there that have that. And it's next to impossible to back out on. It, it's absolutely necessary, and the planning staff asked, and uh, so I uh, illustrated it right away. Oh, well, we appreciate you taking that into consideration. All those in favor of B being met? It's unanimous. C, the proposed use do not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, I would say that it probably um, lowers any, if there are any at all, issues with public safety because now it would become an occupied building. It wouldn't be abandoned and you wouldn't have just think about young kids in high school running around playing in old abandoned buildings. Um, so if anything, this would decrease that. I don't see any issue with this. I agree with Mr. Hewitt. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I would state, I mean, you're showing pictures of all the things that were out there. I think we've got many more problems right now that are there that would basically be problems for substantially for fires or something else that could happen in there so I, I appreciate the fact that you're cleaning it up and you're trying to get some of these existing uses that are there now taken care of and remediated I'm sure some of those things sitting out there that are rust, rusting away can't be good back there all those in favor of C being met it's unanimous D the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies uh, the applicant has stated that um, 
He's having the sewer system tested, and uh, communications with the DEP have been initiated. Um, there is information in here with the sanitary district, and uh, it looks like he's covering all of his base as well. Yeah, I mean, he stated that he's already worked with Public Works to improve the situation down there with drainage, so that's great. Just once. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think you've, you've stated numerous times that you're doing things to help that and planting and everything else would be a great effect for this. So I think that's definitely a great move in the right direction here. All in favor of D, me, met. It's unanimous. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Though the... Uh Though the zone doesn't really, um, it's, it's non-conforming. However, there are nearby properties which are residential, which would seamlessly flow with this. And you're restoring it from a previous use to, um, you're restoring it from a previous use to the same. So nothing's really changing there. Um, you know, I struggle with this one a little bit when you want to find neighborhood, but I mean, yes, the two houses behind, you know, next to him are residential, so. I don't think there's any impact at all here. It was a house, it is a house. Well, we get back to the conforming factor on this, and I appreciate you going over the fact that you do have residential units on both sides, because you technically could do something conforming if you made it commercial, but again, you're going to be up against some tight things probably with the DEP for the shoreland zone, probably with getting cars and vehicles in and out of there, as well as just getting the system that's gonna be able to serve it. So I think with all of those things that you presented, I think I would be more in favor of that. I, I would be struggling what you, what you two folks have brought up before about it can be something that's conforming, but the fact that you're trying to work with the two neighbors on the other side and you're putting it down as a slab so it could potentially be moved if they were all be to come together at some point in time. I think you've done some great things to kind of alleviate those things. So I would agree on that. Um, all in favor of E being met? Unanimous. F, if located in a shoreland <coughs> zone as depicted in the Town of Scarborough's official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all of the requirements of the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinances 81592 and Mr. Longstaff, I'm sure you're going to get a decision back from that that will be addressed or I comments. May, it may not. May not. Right. Okay. They, they only we we are required to forward it to them. They are not required to make comments. Okay. If they choose not to. Now, can they come back? I know we had one a few weeks back that they came back and said that they would disagree with putting what was there there. Would that be something that they could possibly come back with? Well, they this? can, but they didn't get it in before the hearing, so. Okay, so it's moved. This, this is their opportunity. Okay. <laughs> Just wondering if they missed it. <laughs> okay. Um, not the information provided, it shows that the applicant um, is, is doing all, performing all the steps necessary to make sure that what he is doing is will abide by anything that's set forth by DEP or the town. The ship. Right, I mean, he's just such a, got a tiny little sliver there that's actually in the shoreland, which is laughable because he's at the top of a hill, but, you know, he's still got to comply. I think the applicant has pretty much stated that if something arises that he's got to address from the shoreland point of view, he's going to address. I think you've stated you've had dealings with things like this before in the past, so you know how to address those things should they may come up. And, I appreciate Mr. Longstaff's comments that the DEP had a chance to enforce something here, but they didn't do it, so we didn't get any comments from them. So if they're not giving us any information based upon what we had in previous ones, we really have to go with what we're looking at. So I would agree on that. All in favor of F being met? It's unanimous. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I agree, the warranty deeds attached to the application. You should. Yeah, he's shown it. He's demonstrated it. I would agree. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. He's got the, the titles of the land and everything. All in favor of G, me, met? It's unanimous. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of the section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to the subsection 5 of this section. Mr. Hewitt? Um, he's demonstrated that he has the technical and financial capability to 
execute this project. Um, I don't have any concerns with this. No, I think he's demonstrated that. I agree with him. Yeah, I would agree as well. And I mean, you've, you've given us a lot of information on this, so I appreciate that as well. And I mean, I don't think there's anything that we can really put in here. I do like the fact that the planning board recommended the hammerhead and you initiated that and put that into place because I think that's a really good recommendation. So with that, I would say yes to that. All in favor of H being met? It's unanimous. I, the proposed use would be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, um, he's stated the seamless uh, compatibility with the neighbors. Um, and uh, I guess I'll use this point just to in insert a comment that I have. Um, initially reviewing this application, um, not really seeing a real path forward for this. Uh, you know, it's the TBC3 zone. There has to be a commercial solution for this. Um, I agree that it's it's the goal of the board as a general to, as a whole to you know eliminate all the non-conforming uses. But uh, and as it was stated in the town notes that this is this is by definition an exception to the rule. Uh, you really can't do much else with that. Uh, so even though on on its own I don't agree that there should be a home placed here I think the application and thank you for being so detailed on it um, demonstrates that this is really all you can do with it again Mr. Heber I think you've done a good job at showing that you'd have a difficult time trying to really operate a business in that in that spot I think he's demonstrated quite well that uh, our commercial use is probably not a viable alternative. And it's also stated that the surrounding properties are residential. He's keeping it as a residential. <coughs> so I would I concur. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, the fact that you're trying to blend it in with the other two properties on the other side, which are both residential, yes, we could put something commercial, which is my opinion as well. But seeing the fact that you're putting it between two residences and you're making a residence, you're trying to make it a two bedroom residence, and you've also got a plan in place to put it on a slab and to be able to take it and move it off if it needs to be moved off to someone made by the two properties and wants to combine them, you're, you're further working with what it should be for, for, con for conforming uses and actually going down another step. So I think that is good as well. All in favor of I being met? It's unanimous. I don't think we ever had a motion on this. No, nope. I'll move to approve appeal number 2629. Second. All in favor of approval of appeal number 2629. It's unanimous. Mr. Weeks, I'm sure you'll be standing right there. One. So the second part of this appeal, Mr. Chairman, because they have to be taken separately, is now Mr. Weeks will be uh, applying for a variance in order to locate the structure, as you can see on the on the. Uh, oops, I the wrong thing. <coughs> He's proposing to place the structure 3.6 feet. That's the roof overhang. That's the closest point of the structure to the property line. As you can see up here is the building window. So this is the variance that he's requesting. It's basically the same distance as the, the existing structure, which you can see in the yellow there. Basically using that same building line. The, the one thing that will be um, have to be considered is, is that anything under five feet five feet or closer to the line requires fire rating construction, which I'm sure Mr. Weeks knows, but that's a condition, a building permit condition that would be imposed on a structure that close to the line. Any other comments? Uh, this is, again, variance appeal. You know the drill is for four <coughs> criteria, um, having to prove no reasonable return. Um, and, and this is actually why I had to forward the appeal to the DEP shoreline coordinator because this is the variance, not the miscellaneous appeal for the use. They don't really care because the underlying 
um, dictates the use. This is the, the, the reason why the, the appeal was forwarded. Okay. Yep. And we still don't have anything on that. No, no not, nothing came in in the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Weeks, just state your name and where you are again. We'll stop from there. <laughs> Good evening again. Uh, my name is Bill Weeks. Uh, I am the owner of 565 U.S. Route 1 in Scarborough, and I presently uh, live at N. Clay Water Drive in Scarborough. Uh, before you this evening, I am proposing a variance appeal uh, in order that before the fact, not after the fact, uh, I seek and get the proper approvals to remove an existing non-conforming structure and replace it in the same location with a proposed non-conforming setback structure. So the yellow is the outline of the existing. and looking down, that's what you would see that occupies the land, the yellow. And it is that 3.6 feet from the property line. Uh, in order to seek a variance, you need a Class A standard boundary survey, which I have done. And at the same time, because it's a shoreland overlay, we depicted the wetlands, and it shows the, that uh, the proposed rebuilding of the home will be beyond the 75-foot setback, but within the 250-foot setback, i.e., it still makes be in shoreland zoning, and we'll do the proper notification to DEP and go with whatever they uh, offer for conditions as well. Um, I looked at this building, the existing building, very carefully to determine whether or not I could just repair it in kind, right where it is. The foundation is is very cracked. It's non-existent in some parts in the front. There's open gaps. The home itself is two by four balloon frame construction, very rickety. It's had additions put on, even though it's tiny, it's had several pots and pieces put on it over the years. The roof is sagging, and for the horsepower and energy it would take to bring that existing structure into a reasonable compliance for resale, let alone occupancy, let alone uh, fire building, electrical and plumbing safety, it just does not make any practical sense to try to restore the existing structure. So I seek a before the fact variance appeal. Before it's removed, ask for a full variance appeal, and I'm, I'm prepared this evening to go over the four part uh, hardship criteria test in order to uh, secure your approval to replace it, uh, replace the structure. Okay, let's start out with the questions. So we're on the pink, this uh, pink or orange. This package. V1 is a cover sheet. V2, lower right hand corner, V2 is your the application for the variance appeal. And my responses are in the attached uh, pages. V3, second page of the uh, variance appeal process. And V4, the third and final um, application for the variance appeal. V5, is V5 and 6 of the warranty deeds showing that, that I have suffi sufficient right title and interest to the property. And then V7 is the question and answers. Okay, let's go down through the questions. The land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Reasonable return does not mean maximum return. Applicant must demonstrate practical loss of virtually all reasonable use of the land if the variance is not granted. Reasonable return is not determined by personal circumstances of the applicant. If you'd like to just read in your answers to that. Yes. So specifically, we're asking for a sideline <coughs> setback variance. The existing setback is 3.6 foot from the side. Therefore, an 11 foot 4 sideline variance is requested. Um, we're on C, C2, the unique uniqueness. Um, actually, I have one question real quick before we move on to the next uh, part two of the criteria. 
Um, it looks like, and Mr. Longstaff, could you shift the image down so we can see the overlay of the new building, the new structure over the old? Is there a reason why you didn't want to um, have the new structure be more plan view north to about the edge of the existing structure? So presently, it is it is pressed north. You're you're asking south. Uh, yes. No, in okay. the allowable building zone. So the the, build, the allowable. Yeah. South south is south is the top of the page. South is the top. Oh, no, yeah, I, I meant plan so, like plan view. I was right, looking at right. it. Yeah. So the code building envelope is depicted here in the started area. Fifty foot wide lot, fifteen foot side setbacks gives you a twenty foot wide building envelope up the middle, twenty feet wide. And then the TVC three uh, on US Route One allows uh, a twenty five foot setback and a fifteen foot rear setback. So this is the narrow compliant building envelope. As you can see, the existing structure hangs out on both sides, the south and the north, the north extensively. The front yard setback's fine and the rear setback's fine. But right now, the existing structure hangs out both sides. My proposal is to maintain the northerly bound, the northerly facade or the northerly uh, 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 elevation in kind, right where it is, right where it was, is right where it's supposed to be. And therefore, they'll actually, this, the south elevation will become compliant because it won't go beyond the uh, required setback. Okay, just want to hold on for one second. We don't have another mic, so is that good for the... Re That's fine that? for me, it's not good for the audience. I, okay. I don't know if the audience can... Yeah, so when you turn, if you, you, you might be able to it. take turn the mic around. with you. Sure. Just so we can get everything yeah. on there. I still don't understand why you don't move it further into the building envelope, allowable building envelope. You haven't given me a reason why you have to keep it okay. so close to the southerly border or the northerly, 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 northerly border. Yeah, this is the northerly border here. So, the just grab that mic. <laughs> Sorry. We're just swinging around. We're swinging around, yeah. yeah. We'll try that. Remember that hammerhead turnaround that uh, what the staff had, had suggested, as well as I, I, I was planning on that in any event. So this is the property. If you put the, the home with a garage right in the center, right within the, right within the build, building envelope, required building envelope, you actually cannot back out of the garage, keep your, t keep your bumper on the property, and then drive out without jigging a couple times. In order to, so when you're in this, when you're in this bay of the garage, you'll back out here and drive out. When you're in this bay of the garage, you'll be able to back out here and go out. I tried several radiuses on there, and I tried putting the garage from the side. I attempted putting it from behind, but I'm on my sept. I, I don't want to go on my septic, my existing septic system. And then when you consider the noise and the existing structures that are left and right of me right now, the best, best layout. I normally would not propose a garage to be in the front front of the building. That's not normally what we do for contractors and, and for resale uh, and for use. You just don't put the garage in the front. You put the garage on the accessory side of the building. But it, it just will not work out for this narrow walk. The narrow walk restricted me on, as to where my uh, accessories could be as well. So that's why I hugged it right to where it was before. And then I minimized the, the, the total width from where it was. It was 30 feet wide before, and I've dragged it down to 24 foot wide. That's why, the, that's why you see the yellow along the top. The current structure doesn't have a garage, though. The current structure does not have a garage. The current structure has a full basement. It has a half loft. And then, uh, and then it had other amenities over the years out back. Why would you need the garage? Uh, I'm intending to put the garage on in order for a person with uh, uh, mobility uh, difficulties or handicap to be able to to be able to drive right in and then access the home through the garage as, as you folks were uh, trying to work out in your very first appeal. They'll be able to drive right in. No lip, no, act, no, no need to be exterior. They'll be able to drive in, get right into their kitchen, all the doors and openings are proposed to be 36 inches to handicap accessibility. Um, 
all the hardware will be leather. I'll go over all of those details <coughs> as well. Okay. We can get back tomorrow when we do the questions yep. of the board. <coughs> Need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property. This criteria applies to the prop to property, not people, and to uncommon conditions not sh shared by the neighborhood. Which item are you on now? Two. C2. Question two. Yes. C2, I believe, is what your response was. Right, right. So this is one of the very few lots in that TVC uh, zoning district that's so narrow. Uh, others are a little bit wider. The one south of me, I believe, is about 200 foot wide, and the one north of me is a couple hundred feet wide. And there's more acreage as well. So the, the uniqueness of this property is that it's very, very narrow. Narrow and deep. Okay. Uh, as, as well as trying to make a reasonable proposal and reuse the existing septic system, not have to open up more land and earth. Uh, that prohibited me from sliding it back further away from Route 1. Okay. Granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood, essential character characteristics of the neighborhood such as density, development, large open space, and rural, et cetera. Number three, for your C3. Yes, this is a, a very similar criteria to the, the entire special exceptions criteria, uh, the, the unique character and the, the neighborhood. This is a residential home that existed before residential home being proposed. Um, the homes to the north and south of me have garages, and the homes north and south of me have their own uh, subsurface wastewater and their own public uh, water. So I will not be altering any character of the neighborhood by replacing this home with another residential home in the, the proposed location. The hardship is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner of the property. Hardship must be caused by in position by zoning restrictions, not by the action taken by the property owner. It's number so four. So this is a big one. This is the one you would normally have the hardest time to review by, the hardship. It's not a result of the action taken by the applicant, me, or a prior owner. The hardship here is really zoning. The zoning ordinance was invented after this, this uh, existing home was built. The first home was built in 1950. The zoning ordinance was invented in 1959. Uh, what I'm looking to do is put a single-family residence back basically on the same footprint as the old home was. Where you see the pink hanging over the yellow towards Route 1, that's the future garage in that I'm not going to be putting a basement on underneath the old, where the old house was, and I'm not going to be putting any loft or any outside accessory structures. I'm just going to put an enclosed garage there so the person can put their vehicle in, keep it out of the elements from the weather, and unload themselves in a safe, dry area to be able to access their primary residence. Thank you. Do we have any letters? Or? Nope. I'd like to open it up to the public hearing. Any from, any, anybody from the public wishes to speak? Seeing none. We'll close the public hearing. Open up the questions from the board or a motion. I think I'll we have a, a few motion. questions. <laughs> yes. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2630 as presented. Any second? I'll second it so we can get the discussion. Okay. You'd like to start? Um, so my so my question I had earlier about um, the south facing portion of the building, why it wasn't. Uh, more inside of the building envelope um, and realizing now that the uh, a lot of that's due to the turnaround for the pavement for the driveway there um, kind of restricts you from that so I don't really have a concern with that any longer there's one other element I didn't bring up that uh, I could elaborate on if you have just a moment this is the proposed uh, turnaround the proposed ID driveway going into the front of the garage with this home being pushed as far north as possible over the existing basement or the existing footprint, 
this allows a person with a, ve a vehicle to access the back if necessary to have any you know, load or camper or want to put a pool or something out back. If I put it in the middle, it's only 15 foot setback and there are mature trees on the property line right now with their canopy overhanging as well as I have Im improved the, the buffer. There was an overgrown arborvitae and bittersweet mess there uh, in the past. As you can see on photos, this has all been transformed into this, and then it's been planted. You, you, you may have gone by and seen all the hula hoops up there. All the different colors were the, the different uh, uh, vegetation that I proposed with the neighbor before I replanted. I laid it all out in, uh, in actual size. I have burning bushes, I have arborvitaes, I have lilacs, daylilies. Uh, a lot of vegetation has gone back so that the, the neighbor was very excited to see the improvements. So part of that reason for, for keeping it hugged right where it is so you can maintain access behind to get in and redo that subsurface wastewater if it ever fails to enjoy the backyard. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There isn't much vegetation there now. There's mm -hmm. nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> you ripped it all out. I mean, but that's, I mean, what I have to say, it's been vacant for I don't know how long. Oh, and wow. so it's just really nice to see something happening there. You know, and you can tell when you drive by that that house is in pretty rough shape just by driving by. <clears throat> I think the toughest question you're going to have to overcome is not necessarily the one that you thought you might be the toughest one to overcome. I think it's probably going to be the first question. That's always the toughest one for me. I mean, obviously, you purchased the property. The land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the parents is granted. Yep. Well, that's one that I generally never vote yes on. <laughs> As I stated a bit in the beginning, I, I investigated to try to actually reuse the existing structure, not to ask for any variance, just to improve what was already there. And the, the, um, the horsepower, the funds, the activity, the, the, the amount of energy to restore that is just, does not give you the product and the safe and uh, enjoyable residence as a replacement home would in that same location. I commend you for doing the things that you're doing to the house to make it accessible for handicap and everything. I think that's great. The hammerhead's great. I don't think the garage needs to be there. You can pretty much put it back in the same envelope if you took the garage off. I don't, I don't really have any uh, additional comments um, as, far as, as far as the garage in front of the building. Yes, you could get rid of it. And I do understand, and, and I wrote this down too, um, as far as you know, the cost being too high to renovate the structure in place. I mean, it'd be one thing if it was a historical building, but it was just an old you know, bungalow house that was built back in the 50s. Um, Yes, you could just have the house there, build the exact same footprint, even build the exact same house a few inches shorter on the south-facing side. Um, however, I, I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll side with, um, I'll be in favor of this first point on this application just due to the fact of, you know, you're, you're making it more handicap accessible, uh, which the planning board pointed out they really uh, supported and applauded, um, making it easier for you know, if someone if there's going to be senior living there, if, if someone in their uh, senior years wanted to live in that building, they could easily they could they could make it there and make it work really well. So, and usually what we look at is if you're trying to stay within the envelope the best you can, that's usually pretty much a no-brainer for us because we like to see it stay within the same envelope and stay where it is. If we're putting something that's non-conforming back with something non-conforming. I mean, I don't think there's anything prohibiting from going up higher, correct? For a house to, if he took the garage off and... No, there's nothing pro prohibiting him from going up higher, but the portability aspect of it might come into play. <clears throat> Any increase to that existing non-conforming structure would require variance appeal as well. That's true. Yeah. So I can't go up in height. One other point, 
uh, in regards to reasonable return. The yellow depicts the, the, the usable square footage of yellow plus past footprint in the rear was about 2,808 square feet. My proposed pink is 1,444 square feet. I have about a 50% reduction in foot, in not footprint, but in square footage from what was in the present or past compared to what I'm proposing here for the future, a 50% reduction in square footage. Uh, technically, technically, that is about a 20% increase in footprint, but it's all relevant. 20% of the, the, the footprint is only about 208 square feet. I think, Mr. Pleasure, you made the same comment about staying within the footprint, I believe. I don't know what your thoughts are on this with the garage. And well, you, you kind of convinced me that the, the garage should be approximately where it is because of the turnaround. Um, I'm still a little bit... I still don't understand why you can't move the building so it's closer to the envelope, but that's really got nothing to do with the uh, the question on the table, which is the financial reasonable return. Uh, I think I think it's been well demonstrated throughout this evening that the property can't be used for commercial purposes. Therefore. If it can't be used for commercial purposes, it's got to be used for residential. If it can't be used for residential, then it's a complete loss. So he's kind of backed himself right into it. I mean, I, I agree. It's, it's a big loss. If he can't build a house, it's a big loss. Right, and I mean, I, th I think you said that the properties surrounding have garages as well. And so, you know, it's not unreasonable for him to come in and say, I want to put a single family family back in here, make some improvements, and be able to provide, you know, covered parking, especially because it seems he specifically wants to make this marketable to someone who is disabled, um, which I appreciate. I'm not sure how to make it fit into that criteria, well, per se. You've done a lot of great things. I mean, you've done a lot of great things. I just, this is the one I always have trouble on, and, and I, I think it could have a reasonable return. I mean, it's great to have a garage. My old house, I would have loved to have a garage. Right. I never had a garage. Right. Would have oh. been great, but never had it. I totally understand your dilemma. Uh, <coughs> my normal presentation would have been a, a 24 by 24 garage with two, uh, two uh, 9 by 7 doors uh, to try to minimize that. I narrowed it up to a 20 foot wide garage with a 16 foot door so that uh, I, I'm just trying to minimize that uh, the footprint. Although the paint goes out parallel all the way, that's really just the drip edge. Mm -hmm. The building sets back four feet in order to uh, minimize that garage size. What is the square footage of the garage? Uh, it's 24 by uh, 20. Wow. 400 and what? Eight. So the living area of the house is only, only 900, about 912 square feet? 912 square feet. Trying to minimize. Right. Really and I feel like he's made so con so many concessions already, considering all the restrictions that have been placed on this property. And again, it's just nice to see something happening there and going in there. That, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with the garage. Well, let's go down through the questions. I could be proven wrong. Okay. All right, question one. The land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Stop. Same thing, Mr. Peter. Uh, I think the applicants demonstrated uh, that working with such constraints on this existing property already that, um, and with the most recent discussion regarding the applicability of the garage being there, I don't see an issue. Um, I don't see an issue with this point. Issue. Well, again, I don't need to reiterate basically everything I'm saying, but I think you've done a good job at showing that this is what needs to be done and what can be done here. <clears throat> I think he's demonstrated it. I still think you could build a house and not have a garage and it would yield a reasonable return. It's going to be my opinion. 
All in favor of one being met? Opposed? Three to one. Uh, let's see. B, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and the general conditions in the neighborhood. I think that's pretty straightforward with this property. Yep, straightforward. The applicants demonstrated that the unique layout of this property is due to the existing um, boundaries and conditions of the property and this building setbacks. Shoot. Again, he's done a good job at showing this is a really tough property to work with. He's trying to make the best as we can out of it. I agree with him. Yeah, I think you've done a great job with actually presenting all kinds of alternatives, making the property better, making a lot of things plausible for it to be someone that's handicapped or whatever, and looking at a lot of concerns as well as the neighbors and talking to them about the vegetation and everything that you've been proposed to be planting. So I think that's met all in favor of two being, uh, B being met, it's unanimous. C, the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. That's pretty basic. Um, yeah, I like how you said locality. Um, the, I, I don't think that this will, based on the residences on either side of the property. I think, again, generally, I would not be in support of this because of the, in the TVC3 zone. However, again, the previous points due to the nature of the property and everything else, this is really all you can do with it. So uh, it will match the adjacent residential buildings, and that's fine with me. I, I agree, Mr. Hebert. Mr. Place? I agree. I think, if anything, it's going to be bringing the character of this property up to be more conforming with the rest of the properties around, and a lot of great things. You're talking about walking around the back. You're talking about planting, vegetation. Um, you've got some great things going on to work with the neighbors, and I'm, I appreciate that you have talked to the neighbors, it seems that you have, and we always look for that for people. So, all in favor of C being met? It's unanimous. D, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior <laughs> owner. Mr. Hebert. The hardship is not the result of an action, <laughs> action taken by the result, or Yes, it's fine. I'm glad someone else is having problems speaking tonight. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> I think he's did a good job with his with the maps and everything, and showing the different zones and the issues that he's been facing, and trying to overcome it. Overcome it. This place. Yeah, yeah it's with, with pretty. The cause of it. <laughs> it, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the town caused <laughs> hardship, and I think it's a very very small property. It's hard to build on. Uh, we've looked at commercial, we've looked at other things, so I think you've done a good job with that as well. All in favor of D being met? Okay, on appeal number 2630, all in favor of approving appeal number 2630? It's three, opposed, one, passes. Okay. Thank you. Oh no, make them. They're going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to keep mine for the fact. You should have one for the rest. I got mine folded up in here, so. Yeah, here you go, buddy. Thank you. Would the board like to take a five minute recess to take a quick break or yes, no? Uh, sure, just take a restroom break if you want. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes good? Or? Yep. Okay.
We are back. <laughs> appeal number 2631, a variance appeal request by Rick Parts, 1 White Sands Lane, Assessors, Map U1, Parcel 61. And Mr. Longstaff, would you like to introduce and any staff comments? Sure, Mr. Chairman. The appeal is a standard variance appeal because the property is both in a in a shoreland zone and a floodplain, flood hazard, uh, special flood hazard area. So the only uh, relief available to them is the standard hardship variance. Um, the appellant is going to um, explain to you uh, that they would like to take the existing structure that's at uh, One White Sands uh, Lane, <coughs> demolish that structure, and rebuild a structure in pretty much the same envelope uh, for many of the same reasons that we've heard before. There's nowhere else to go. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think that they will uh, show you through the, through the uh, uh, materials in their packet um, what their, their plans are for that and what relief they're, they're here to ask for, which is basically the, the rear setback um, on the property. They have two frontages, a primary frontage on uh, Kent, uh, street and the secondary frontage on White Sands Lane. And so then the rear of the building is supposed to be 30 feet uh, from the back property line. The property is a non-conforming property and so they can't meet that setback even with the existing building they couldn't meet that setback. So that's the relief that they're here to, to ask the board for tonight. Any further comments? Not for me. Okay. Uh, good yes. evening, folks. My name, name, is Mike, yeah. <laughs> name is Mike Skolnick, uh, Northeast Civil Solutions here representing Rick Hartz. Um, the current property of White Sands is actually owned by Robert and uh, Shirley o Ottman. There's a PNS agreement on it, but from Rick Hartz from the Ottmans. And as uh, just re reiterating a couple things Brian said, it is in the shoreland zone, so it does need to go for a hardship variance. It's also in the coastal residential one zone, which we all know is subject to the Higgins Beach character code. The existing building as it sits right now is a legally non-conforming lot and a legally non-conforming dwelling. Um, it was constructed in 1900, it predating zoning, it non-conforming with the rear setback, both primary and secondary <coughs> front setbacks, side setback, as well as lot coverage, and the character-based code as it is now for the actual dwelling itself. Our proposed structure is actually proposed, the reason to do so is to raise it above the flood plan to take that existing house down. There's also, uh, in the existing foundation, there's mold, mildew, there's lead paint throughout the building as well and we're trying to bring that up to code as it should be right now. The proposed structure will be raised above the new, newly adapted uh, FEMA floodplain. So that will come into the 2017 maps, that will come into play in 2019 apparently. Um, it's also gonna be enhancing the conformity and bringing completely into conformance with the primary and secondary front setbacks as well as the side setbacks and actually keeping with where that rear setback is right now. So it's not in, not increasing that nonconformity at all. However, it's not reducing the nonconformity right there either. That will be the only thing that it's actually nonconformant with for the proposed structure. Other than that, um, I just wanted to run through the existing hardship criteria and answer any questions you possibly have. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, why don't we go right into the questions? <clears throat> Land in question cannot be yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Absolutely, this is true. Mostly because um, where the structure is right now, it's actually right in the floodplain. If it is not taken down and raised, <coughs> put on posts and pilings like proposed, eventually the structure is not going to exist. I mean, you can't. Uh, yield a reasonable return. Obviously, we did, or he would if he bought the house and lived in the structure that's there to date. However, at, there's a point where this structure might not be there anymore, say a big enough flood comes around. So there wouldn't be any sustainable reasonable return going forward. Bringing this, pr the proposed structure will actually 
make sure that going forward there will be a reasonable return on this property and this structure will, will always be there for people to enjoy and sustain a reasonable yield. Looks like a unique structure. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Absolutely. It's a, as it sits right now, it's legally non-conforming. It doesn't conform with many of the setbacks as most dwellings do in the neighborhood, nor the character code. The proposed structure will conform with the majority of the setbacks besides that rear setback, which we're asking to go from, from 30 down to 18 feet. Um, it'll also bring the structure into conformance with the majority of the structures in the area that do conform to the character code. Okay. Granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. And a lot of a lot of repeating myself here. However, it will bring us into conformance with the neighborhood, absolutely, for, with the character code as well. And the hardship is not a result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. The it's actually a hundred percent due to the zoning. This uh, the structure was built in 1900 before shoreland zone or the character based code was actually implemented into the area so it hardship was completely brought on by the zoning in the area okay. for both the non-conforming law and non-conforming dwelling okay great do we need to address anything on the shoreline no then the criteria is again this was uh, this was sent to the dep okay. uh, we've received no comment okay and Sorry to interrupt, Brian. There was a uh, sand dune, NERPA sand dune permits permit uh, submitted to the DEP. It's a 120 day permit. So obviously there's a little bit of overlap. The, as of this <coughs> point, talk to Audi Arbo, who's actually running the project, and there's no comments to date. We met with her at a pre app meeting and did everything they said to do. So mm -hmm. it's in right now. So even if we approve this, you'll still have to go through what they did? It will have to be approved, yes. But they will also not approve something until, I believe, until the ZBA approves something. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to open the public hearing. Seeing none, would you like to speak on your behalf for purchasing the house? Or? No, I think. Okay. Close the public hearing. Seeing none. Open it up. No letters. Okay, so we don't have anything. Open it up to questions, comments, or a motion from the board. I'll make a motion to approve the appeal number 2631 as presented. Any second? Second motion. Okay. Mr. Hebert. I'd like to start going down the, the questions. Land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless variance is granted. Are there any questions you have? Um, I don't necessarily have any questions about this. Um, <clears throat> the, the existing house is already uh, an interesting aesthetic and character to the neighborhood. Um, I'm sure it won't be, no one will be sad to see it go. Um, the new building that's proposed, um, it looks larger to me than what, what it actually going to be so I'm just trying to mentally get myself past that right now uh, however based on uh, based on the plans that they're providing here um, and trying to maintain it within uh, within the setbacks here um, I think they're doing all the right things for this any questions before we go to the questions no questions Suppose. Looks like Mr. Fish has been involved in this because he knows what I'm looking for. Looks like we got some pictures of mold. What's what's the wall picture with the uh, paint? Is that like water damage or it's something? It's uh, lead paint that's just Yo. deteriorating, all peeling off the walls pretty much. Okay. You said there were also issues with the electrical or? Yes, it's just how it was wired. It's just not to code. Not in two. Pardon? Knob and two. Yeah. Or fuses. Or worse. Yeah. Don't know the answer. It's probably a combination. <laughs> and 
see. First picture's after the house. There's a ladder. I'm not sure what that's a picture of. I do not have the pictures in front of me. If you can pull them. Oh. Like the, that, that one right down that the bottom. Okay. Oh, I think it's just showing the electric. Yeah, the it's just the, uh, yeah. the, the way they have the, it's, there's wires running all along the insulation. Oh. As a, as Fire as hazard. Yeah. And so oh. I think they were, they were just trying to show that. Okay. Well, long stuff. Can you bring up the next picture? What are we looking at in these two? Just it looks like maybe the furnace. Mm -hmm. I don't even know which way is up. I think the photo yeah. on the the photo yeah. on the photo on the right is depicting a wire being held up by um, tape. tape. Lettering from the bottom, bro. Or, um, or a lettering has hook. nothing to do with the picture. Oh. <laughs> if you can get it to rotate that one. Yeah, I don't think yeah, that's. I think, the I think that's are, the picture is merely. Depicting a typical old cottage on the beach. It's got it to be built. You could use those pictures. Is that a wire running through a beam or something? Like that? It's stapled. Stapled. That, those are in the basement too, so it has a full basement, uh, even though it's in the floodplain. Okay, so I'm assuming this is the old furnace for the last picture that we made. Yeah. And this must be the mold. Yes. Come up a little bit for the top one there. And then the flooring, is that water or mold coming up through the flooring? Mold, yeah, mold, yeah. And what about the one in the middle? Go up a little bit, Mr. Lawson. That's just a room. That's, That's like a beam above the room. Is that just <coughs> Oh, it's looking up like a staircase. Down one. Or down the staircase there you go. into the basement. What is that one? Is that just showing like an entryway that maybe not in compliance or? Well, this looks like there's mold or something. There's, there's mold the up there. There's mold on the yeah. There's mold on the wood. So don't look at the stair. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. He's looking at the picture. Yeah. It's not. So the one down. That's that's just. It's where part it's, of the okay, picture. Okay. It's part of all one. Okay. Yeah. That's, right. yeah. that's I was. I thought it was two pictures when no. I did that. Yeah. Just one okay. It's obviously mold on. That must be the underneath. Yes. Box cross yes. space or. It's it's a it's a eight foot ceiling. Unfinished basement, the whole length of the house. So what you're looking at is the basement under the first floor. I don't think we got that on the. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, good. Any more questions? I think I've addressed mine. And you're keeping this within the actually shortening up the envelope. Did you say? Yes, it's actually the envelope's going to reduce the amount of impervious on site will remain pretty What's much the same. What square footage are we going from to? Off the top of my head, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Just say who you are, please, sir. Yeah, so, the, uh, so Rick Hart's um, the proposed purchaser of the property. Um, the current building is 55 by 34 or 1,750 square feet. Uh, the new building will be, uh, according to the Higgins Beach Code, 37 and a half by 28. Uh, with a side addition that's 14 by 10. And so the, the, the base building plus the addition on the first floor is 1,220 square feet. Okay. So it's going from 1,750 building to 1,220 building. And how much more are you going up? Two floors. So, two so floors it'll just now. be a... Uh, so currently the current building is a, right is a full basement. The current building is a full basement a first floor, and then a stairway that goes up to a second floor that's 10 by 10 on the second floor. It's not even, there's a closet up there. I'm not really sure what the- Looks like it would be a treacherous what the way to walk in the, the snow. Yeah, what the purpose of that was. Um, going to a fill in the basement, put the house up on pilings to meet the new flood zone requirements, first floor, second floor. So. Um, the reason why it probably looks larger on the map is like just the decks and the porches, sure. yep. which is it's not interior space. Sure. So the actual interior space is shrinking significantly. Yep. Great, thank you. Yep. So is there going to be I'm trying to look at this? One, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Is there going to be? Parking underneath where the piers are, or yes, yes, there will be parking underneath. Is the that open? First bed. Yeah, it is open. Okay. Yeah, it's 
better to get ahead of the flood zone. Any other questions? All right, let's go through the questions. Land in question cannot yield re reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Mr. Hebert. Uh, do the current state, well, uh, reviewing the photos of uh, the mold issues, the electrical issues, the water infiltration issues, um, there's probably some life safety requirement issues there with potentially narrow stairwells, especially going to that second floor crow's nest that you're describing. Um, I, th I think this needs to be granted in order to, you know, make this an actual legitimate structure. <coughs> I mean, I agree with Mr. Heber. Again, I mean, we're trying to improve the property here and make it in conformity with the other properties around it. This place. Uh, this is this is so typical. Uh, Higgins Beach. Small, tiny lots. Most of them really non-buildable that have been in existence for years and years and years, and people buy them. And they've got to be able to replace them. They have to be able to replace them. It's just not fair to anybody. Um, and he brings up a good point. It's, there's a house on that lot right now that's not going to last very much longer. We allow them to do something. It's going to be a big loss there. So I think you stated it quite well. Not only as you heard from the last appeal, this would be where I would vote no automatically. Mr. Fisher knows the types of things that I'm looking <laughs> for. Um, we've got some things, obviously, with the rotting of walls and mold and electrical. And I mean, if it's knob and tube, and it's also fuses. I mean, that's not really where it needs to be. I think this is the first time we've had someone come before us that's buying the property and hasn't already bought it. So, I mean, Which that... Which we greatly appreciate. <laughs> Very good. That, that kind of leans itself a little bit to the fact of reasonable return either because you're coming before us to see if you can get this done to buy the property so you're not buying it. And then we're saying, well, you bought the property. There obviously is a reasonable return because you bought it. So, and I mean, this property's all over the place. I mean, it looks like they started out with one spot and went up to another. It looks like there's different problems with structural as well as getting it in the floodplain so it can be where it needs to be. As well as the, that staircase, I have no idea what that's going to. There's just a lot of safety and health issues that I think are addressed in this, which allows me to vote a little bit differently than I normally would. So all those in favor of a being met, it's unanimous. B, <coughs> the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition in the neighborhood. That looks pretty self-explanatory by the pictures. It is. It was constructed in you know, early 1900s, and they're not asking for a lot here either, so I see no issues with this. No, I think they've done a good job at demonstrating uh, kind of all the issues that they're facing with this property, and um, Bring it up to character code, which everyone's always looking for. This place? No comment. <clears throat> yeah, I think there's a lot of things that are being done here that help out. I mean, that, like I said, it looks like an eyesore the way it is. I mean, it's like they built one section and built another section and put, decided to put stairs in between them for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, but the fact that you're actually bringing it up, you're trying to do the floodplain, and you bring it more to be something that's probably going to be more in conformance with the neighborhood that actually looks a little bit more appealing to, to someone that's actually driving through the neighborhood. It probably would remain the same and everything. We don't have any of the um, setback issues or anything like that down there with this, right? But that's all that we don't need to deal with any of that stuff, right? For the, the second beach? Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't need to deal with any of that stuff we've dealt as, with in other beaches. As far beaches. as the character code? Yeah, like they're, they're not. I know there was like setback from certain distances with the new character code and stuff. We don't need to deal with any of that with this because it's already. What they're, they're showing means. here is that they're meeting all okay. of those setbacks except for the one that they're asking relief. Okay. And I do appreciate the fact that you're reducing the home. 
I yeah. mean, rather than trying to go for the maximum, you're reducing the square footage and footprint. So, the raising it and everything else is all very positive. All in favor of B being met? Unanimous. C, the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. <laughs> nope, it does the opposite. It brings it more into, I'll say, conformance with the character of the surrounding homes. <clears throat> Shoot. I agree, Mr. Heber. I mean, what, what he's proposing to do is to bring it in line with what the new code wants the community to look like. I think he's doing a really good job, too. You're down there. You'd probably appreciate yeah. the new look rather than the old uh -huh. one. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it definitely changes the character for a positive. All in favor of C? It's unanimous. D, the hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. I think that's pretty self-explanatory due to when it was <laughs> built and built and built. I have nothing to add. <laughs> we got to take that question out. <laughs> Yes, he's demonstrated that the property or the building <coughs> was built before the zoning ordinances were implemented. I think yes. <laughs> I would agree. I mean, it was totally zoning that made this happen. And I don't know how they were able to do what they did with it with all the different additions that look like they're going on. So, all in favor of D? It's unanimous. Okay, all in favor of voting for appeal number 2631 to pass. Unanimous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming before us before you purchase this. Yeah. Great to see you. You got some folks that know what they're doing down there, too. <laughs> Thank you. Storing staff. Yes, sir. Do we have any zoning board comments? I know we have a new member coming on as an alternate for next month. Yes. Um, once the council passes. I apologize. I forgot the name of the new member. But, um, me too. Uh, <clears throat> and it's escaping me. But um, I She's believe. She's a realtor, right? Huh? Is she a realtor? She is a realtor. Yeah, I bet it's in my email. <laughs> it is in your email, actually. Uh, so, so we'll be in fully staff. We'll have two alternates. Uh, Mr. Blaze will move up the first alternate. The shoot will move into a voting member slot, and um, so I think we're being in good shape for the first time in a while, mm -hmm. uh, as far as having full board. I don't think, I don't think I was. I don't think I've ever seen the full board. I've seen it. No, when I started, it was full. Yeah, was it? It, was it was full, but then we had uh, a person resign. Two, well, two people actually resigned. That's right. It's Jim and. So it's like, anyway. Like, I'm really happy and I'm really pleased, and I I, I apologize profusely that I got the name. Melinda Torrens. Melinda Torrens is our <laughs> board member. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. I've not met her. Um, we'll be sending her some information um, between now and the next meeting, kind of getting her up to speed on what uh, materials we have for, for board members, and uh, I really don't know what her experience is exactly, although I believe she has a lot of municipal board experience. I, I, again, I think Tody mentioned it in the email, but I forgot to bring it with me. Cool. So I, I really think that she'll bring a lot to the board, um, even as an alternate, and uh, grateful that uh, somebody stepped up. So. And we should have Mr. Loisel and Mr. Maroon back as well. So. Um, you mentioned tables. materials, and didn't they recently change Higgins Beach ordinance and stuff? Because I'm just thinking, I got all my binders and stuff over two years ago, which has the Higgins Beach stuff in it, and then there's a separate binder, I think, which has more Higgins Beach stuff in it. Four. Should we update those? So Because I look at them all. Yes. So Higgins Beach, definitely. Yeah. Um, that's about 50 pages. I can print that for you and send it. No, yeah, that's fine. You could actually email it. You want to print all that off, though? Yeah, is my boss watching? Yeah. I'm <laughs> okay. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, a few folks have signed up for training. Um, uh, offered by Maine Municipal Association in July. So if anybody else is interested, just let uh, myself or Karen know, and uh, we'll get you signed up for that. Um, um, 
one of the reasons I think somebody was mentioning that we, I guess we usually were, we're changing the process is one of one of the downfalls of almost every municipal board. One of the weaknesses is that um, in doing any decision, you're supposed to craft findings of of uh, fact and conclusions of law. And it's very tough to do on the fly during the meeting. And so I'd like to try, with, with the chair's permission, I'd like to try a new way of doing that. The decision you make tonight stands. This is when, the, this, as of this date, the decision stands. But as far as drafting the actual written findings, it's much better if we can go back and, and review the tape and bring it, and, and, and Mr. Uh, Ebert has done a good job tonight. Uh, thank you. That's kind of what we need to do is go through each one and, and have the findings of fact, and then you draw your con conclusions of law from the findings of fact. That's why we'd like to craft that better, only because it is the permanent record on this, this any, any appeal, and I'd like to have it <coughs> a little bit better so that as you remember, one one uh, appeal last year was kicked back to us because we didn't do a good job at the findings and conclusions. We kind of knew, I think the board knew what it meant, mm -hmm. it knew what its intent was, but it wasn't articulated so that a court or another reviewing authority could see what what the board the board's intent was. So this is just a way that we can get it a better drafted decision for you to, to Was to that sign. recommended by the town's attorney to yes. do it that way? Is that yeah. how other towns do it? Um, there, methods are all over yeah. the place, but many towns do do it this way. Some towns will even bring in prepared draft um, findings of fact, which because if you if you look at the decision that you signed tonight, that's kind of I mean that's just basic factual stuff. You basically are pulling that from the application. Right. It's not rocket science to do it. It's just hard to do it on the fly when you're when you're trying to do it here. And so some some towns will even have the draft findings brought to them. They'll draw the conclusions from the. They'll agree or disagree with the findings or amend them. But then they'll they'll do the findings or the excuse me the conclusion based on those findings. And it just it it kind of gets that first step out of the way so that you can get right to where yes. the conclusion of law comes from. Right. The the I think the attorneys are sort of mixed on that approach because they feel that there's it, it arguably is sort of putting words in your mouth, right. which we don't want to do. So this way we're going back and taking the the recording, the written record, and the notes, and we're 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 drawing those nuggets out of what you actually said, <laughs> and, yeah. and and you still have the ability <coughs> to amend it. The decision again, the decision still stands, and we can even send out. A letter to the uh, to the applicant saying you know your appeal was approved four to one or whatever, and then create that that decision. Um, uh, in some cases, that needs to be re well, in all, almost all cases, that needs to be reported. Right, the decision. Um, so, um, like what you what you had for an example tonight, those just stay here for our records. Those normally don't. Oh, it's the certificate of variance. Correct. Yeah. Certificate of variance yeah. is, and um, yeah, those what get recorded. So. Right. So so anyway, that 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 allows us some time to draft it and get it to your to the board's liking before you sign off. Again, you've made your decision. That's what that's the date it stands. This just gets a better record uh, of uh, what that decision was, how you how you arrived at it. That's the important part. Um, you just changed it all up for the new guy. That's what they wanted. Right. And you had said that the administrative appeal we had last month has been appealed to the Superior Supreme. Supreme yeah, we don't or? talk about that. No. What's that? You no. can't no. bring that up. It's not oh, okay. No. I like this new method. <laughs> do you? No, I do. I, I think, is we mentioned coming up with things on the fly. And usually when it comes to me, I haven't really put my thoughts together yet. And it takes me a little bit longer just to figure out what I want to say. So I end up just saying, I mean, I say what I want to say, but it takes me a lot more time to sort of deliberate on what I want to say. Um, so by having these pulled out and given to us, I, I think it's very useful. Plus also, um, granted, you're pulling it from the recording. You're not coming with something prepared here. but. We also have the final say because we have to sign off on it too. So you know the owners is on so it's us almost to like review the minutes. You know, yeah, it's, it's it's a, you, you can make amendments to the minutes exactly. if you see something that isn't right there. Yeah, and this is the same way. Right. No, I like that. 
I think it's good. Legally, I think that'll help the town out a lot more, tighten things up. Yeah, it's great because Brian and Karen have helped me stumble my way through here from my second <laughs> meeting, so. Only a lifetime I, I ago. Refuse, I refuse to wear the glasses, so I probably yeah. should. But, uh, anyway. I just wanted to say that um, I liked how Mr. Crockett was consistent with who, how he went around the board. That's a lot easier for me to follow right. than jumping around or switching it up, where he continuously started with Mr. Hebert tonight. That was helpful. But he doesn't have to always start with Mr. Hebert. He could start on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's just helpful. Yeah, no, it's good. After he said he wants to gather his thoughts, I was the first, he was the first to go to. I know, right? It's okay. I was writing down notes as we were going. Yeah. Does anybody have anything further? Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Thank you, everybody. So keep.